Welcome back to Women's Speed Chess Championship. I'm World Grandmaster Dina Belenka, and I am joined by Grandmaster Rina Crush. Today, we're going to have an amazing show, a second show for the day. We are having today a matchup between Katerina Langno and Humpy Cornero. Well, 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 the previous match was a real hit on the board. Everybody was uh, sweating, uh, including the players, Ho Yifang and... Um, Carissa Ipa, that match was a very big uh, domination by uh, Ho Yifania and uh, Irina. How excited about, uh, are you about the match to come? Yeah, I'm super excited as I think this match between Humpy Koneru and Katarina Lagno is actually a very close match. Both of these ladies have been women's world rapid champions. Humpy uh, as recently as 2019. Uh, Katarina Lagno is a multiple time world blitz champion. Um, so I, you know, she's, she's definitely well known as a very good blitz player, you know, more so than Humpy. Humpy is kind of like just a strong overall player who, you know, who can do well in any format, but like, let's say she's not really known to be a blitz specialist. So from that point of view, I would have to give a Katarina the edge just for the format, but let's take a look at the insights. So we see Katarina um, playing a lot more on chess.com. Their accuracy is very similar. Um, okay, she doesn't lose a lot by the flag. Yeah, so she's, uh, she's got those blitz skills. Let's take a look also at the, uh, the smarter chess stats and see who is favored got... to win today. Yeah, we've got uh, a very nice stats here saying that Katarina is actually the favorite with uh, 63 probability win versus 37. I would not be so confident saying that Katarina is uh, uh, so much expected to win this match. We see their ratings. Okay, maybe Katarina's blitz is a little bit higher. Um, this score, what is interesting, 5 plus 1 is expected to be even. That is so so not likely to a human being to have an even score after after a match we see six to four and three plus one portion and five and a half to four and a half and one plus one portion of the match uh irina what do you think about this stats and do you agree with them you know okay 63 to 37 um yeah maybe a little high towards logno um, overall, you know, Kaneru does quite well against Logno in their, you know, I, I've taken a look at the history of their games, you know, going back to 2006. And certainly, uh, you know, she wins more than she loses, probably by quite a margin. And, um, but the one place where, you know, Katarina does have, uh, you know, kind of like some wins against her is in Blitz chess, right? And this is what we got today. We got a Blitz match. So do I think these uh, chess stats, um, are too much off? No, not too much. I mean, I do think that I have to give the edge to Katarina, but it really depends on, you know, what kind of game Humpy shows us today. If she's going to like play faster um, than she did against Zegnidze, play, as, you know, play her usual strong chest, then I think it's going to be a very close match. Absolutely. And we already have the games that have just started. There we go with Petrov. How interesting. We have Katarina Lagno. We are here with white pieces versus Humpy. And uh, C4 has just happened on the board trying, you know, to uh, to change the, the, the type of the pawn structure, maybe get some isolated pawns. Who knows? Yeah. So in her previous match uh, in the top 16, she was playing Nana Zagnidze and that match, you know, featured, didn't really feature any E4s as Nana is not an E4 player. So this match is going to be very different because Katarina is primarily an E4 player. So Humpy is going to be playing uh, her Petrov, I guess. It's a very 
solid opening. We saw Tan Zhang Yi also use this to good effect in the Women's Speed Chess Championship. Um, definitely puts the pressure on White to show uh, something out of the opening. And here, yeah, Humpy plays a line with the bishop on d6 as opposed to e7 that actually I used to play when I took up the Petrov as black. And yeah, so far this is all quite normal. Knight c3 takes, trade, trade. Okay, I'm sure, I'm sure there's probably some very good reason why white doesn't even want to consider not recapturing the knights. Um, so we're not going to look at that. But pawn takes queen d7. So what do we see here, Dina? Yeah, there is a nice position for white, I would say, with a nice... Uh... With a nice activity here on the queen side, I say open file. E belongs to white as well. Now rook to b1. Seems like all the pieces of white are developed and well connected. There is harmony between white pieces. I mean, of course, there is a bishop on c1. I know it's not developed, but you know what they say about bishops? They sometimes already work from their own position. They are half developed already. Well, look at this knight on b8 and the rook on a8. They, these pieces seem to be, to be having some some time trouble. Yeah, I mean, okay, of course a key line here, right, is that there was no queen takes d5. That's what the whole strategy of blacks is based on, that you would lose your queen to the discovery. Um, and white needs to act quickly because black is about to do this kind of maneuver towards the outpost square. And if black does that, then of course black has no problems in the position at all. So Katarina does play this move. Um, I guess I have some questions about it. Yeah, you know, it was curious to me. It's like, so why not knight c6? There must have been something annoying about this pin that she didn't like. Um, is it, you know, did she not like knight e5 or did she not like, you know, c4, maybe then d5? Like, yeah, I mean, I would say this type of move is definitely something I would have thought about as white and seen if I could try to exploit this pin and send that knight all the way back to b8. Um, I mean, I would have to give white some sort of edge here, although maybe it's not so huge. And that is why Humpy chose a rook d8. Um, okay. So I guess her point is, Dina, is that after queen takes, she wants to recapture with a knight. Yeah, the recapture with a knight would make total sense because as we said, finishing the development finally and, uh, um, h6, g3 has just been followed, and uh, um, I like the a4 move as well. You know, maybe after queen takes b5, we can also capture with a pawn, you know, and create the a weakness. It is all very, very nice here for for white, although, um, yeah, it's not so easy to understand how to proceed, especially now you see that black finished the development. So like white is supposed to be having an advantage, but why will we asking himself like, where is my advantage? Yeah, I guess the big question here, right, is a6, right? What happens because it looks like white can win this pawn. So why is white not better? So queen c8. Uh, I guess white is not better because there's like a counter attack on c3. That must be the plan. Um, yeah. Although it's interesting that she didn't take right away, right? There, I mean, that move, of course, needs to be calculated as white's, uh, white can take the bishop on d6 at some point, and then they lose their knight on f3. So there's all these, like, all these intermezzos, right, that would have needed to be looked at like that, or like rook b3. And, um, you know, then you have to kind of evaluate this position, I guess, queen c7 still would have avoided uh, losing the bishop, but she, Humpy decides to go knight f6. Definitely, oh, interesting. Okay, so she is actually going for this pawn. Yeah, but for, for the weakness. And uh, this, in a way, also makes sense. Um, here, I kind of like the way how, um, I would say black a little quite, yeah, equalized out of the opening, which was uh, slightly unpleasant. Now C4 mm -hmm. is just, just happened. To... C4 is uh, also like going to the, you know, the classical hanging pawns type of position. Um, yeah. I mean, I practically, Irina, I would say that white is the one who can have advantage here. What do you think? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, well, definitely I, I like the way Humpy has navigated it because there was pressure on her from the opening. And to get to this position as a success, I also like that her time management has been quite good. Um, there is, you know, she does have the luxury of thinking a little bit here, I think, with the amount of time that she has. Um, you know, there is idea, there are ideas like C5 that she needs to watch out for, right, using that pin. She might think about um, actually moving her queen. I wouldn't be shocked if that queen was moving shortly, although it kind of enjoys that diagonal, but what can it really do there? Yeah, the diagonal is nice, indeed. Yeah, and so actually, so she makes a quite a big decision here. She takes the knight. I, I like that. I think this is a very interesting move by Humpy. Um, and I think, you know, she's going to try to make the case that because of that outpost, um, actually her knight is not worse than White's bishop, and this bishop has a lot of pawns and dark squares, so he's not really that phenomenal of a bishop. Indeed, and uh, knight can easily, let's say, how you call it, yeah, neutralize the bishop because mm -hmm. of, let's say, lack of activity or some, some, some other things. Although here, I like the bishop e3 move because it kind of, for now, you know, stops both, as you point out, knight g5 and knight c5 also not possible. So for now, bishop, let's say, is, uh, is better than the knight. But long term, so many weaknesses for, for white in their structure that obviously, uh, with, you know, being a little bit more solid, black can take over. Yeah, I agree. I mean, um, okay, this is the problem. She's kind of now going down a minute on the clock, which is a bit much. Um, oh, wait, she played queen c6, right? She got out of that pin, rook b d1. So we're going to make it so we always see. Um, we're updated, updated on the live yeah, updated position. position. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Humpy, okay. She's definitely given up ground on the clock. Of Her position is good, but she needs to speed up, speed up, Humpy. Because Katarina, this is where she is going to find her chances against you. Um, yes, we, and Kat Katarina yeah. is, you know, she she usually she's she's like a um, uh, cold blooded killer. She like when she finds her her way, her flow, she will not let you second chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I definitely don't like a minute and a half difference between these two sides. Now, Humpy made a safe move because obviously White is going to have to take that knight. There's no way they could let it go. So in a way, 30 seconds is all right for this position because it is a very simplified position and Humpy's certainly not in any danger. Um, but I guess like she was thinking about it because you know, she was trying to go for more. And I, I do think that, you know, there's still, you know, when 30 seconds on the clock against almost two minutes, like you are in some practical danger, like probably rook d1 would be my first instinct for white here. Um, can she really do something else? I don't know. Queen d3, I guess, is a similar kind of move. Yeah. Well, overall here, uh, um, I say it's super dynamical, yeah, because it's it's all a matter of um, of, of a tempi. What White manages to take over, yes, they will, they will, they will. I mean, I'd say this game is for three results. I'd say, like, either one of the sides wins is the, the most probable than, than the draw here somehow. That's my feeling. Yeah. So rook e4. Okay, white's kind of getting a little more active, right? And I guess they want to go maybe rook g4 at some point, attacking the pawn on g5. Okay, Humpy's reminding. Uh, that's Katarina. actually a very nice idea. Yeah, yeah. there's a past a pawn on the board. Yeah, and imagine you bring the rook on g4 and then you play h. Like if the pawn g5 is protected, you can always play h4. My favorite move and uh this stuff seems really dangerous for for black i'd say and also as you said the time look 13 seconds only for humpy versus one minute for katarina yeah. and humpy saying a4 i'm not afraid of any mating attacks i'm gonna just make my queen yeah i think also actually i guess on rook g5 there is queen c4 right so it doesn't look that dangerous i mean at least humpy is trying to bother her with some counterplay i do like that um, but yeah, I mean, I agree that like this position is, you know, is very sharp still with that pass pawn on the board and some potential play that white has against the black king. So we don't really know how this is all going to work out. Yeah, I was just about to suggest this queen a3, very nice move that was played on the board, because at the same time you attack the g5 and you stop the a3. Although here we see f6, a counterattack, a defense of the counterattack of the, of the e5. Uh, that's nice. And also, Katarina is getting lower on time, 
one she's three, getting maybe? Yeah. Ooh, she's... back but here, like, how are you going to create the attack? And the pawn is moving, A3. Yeah, so she's allowing that check, which I don't really like. I'm not sure about that whole trade that Humpy did. But okay, pretty smart defense by her. She's offering a rook endgame where she will be able to put her rook behind the pass pawn. Take, take in rook A8. She's not even going to hesitate. A3, or, oh, yeah. Oh, Wait, yeah, simple. well, this is, uh, this is a game over. A A3, Ooh, interesting. A3. Oh, maybe A3. not. Yeah, A3, A2 wins. It wins. A2. Yeah, Rook C1. A2. Rook C1 is the only yeah. move. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You actually could have. Yeah. Wow. Humpy wins. Well, I yeah. would say this is quite surprising. Look at that. I mean, Humpy is so much behind on the clock, but on the chessboard, it's not so easy to beat her. Right? Yes, Dinah? absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. It's, uh, well, just, you know, as we saw in the previous match, a, let's say, a player who is less expected to win wins the first match, wins the first game, and uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, it's the first game. Let's say it doesn't matter that much yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we don't really know. I think did Humpy wind up... How did she do against Zagnidze in the first game? I actually can't remember. I think I feel like she lost. That's my... Memory. So, okay, what do we have here? We, we have is an anti Grunfeld because, yes, Katarina Logno is a well known Grunfeld player. So, Humpy not playing into the main lines with d4, which she surely can do, but she has prepared like this kind of uh, sideline um, where the move d4 is delayed. Okay, so there's nothing there for black to attack with c5. Um, do I understand this concept? I mean, not yet. I mean, we're going to have to have Humpy, Humpy show us what she's got in mind here. Yeah, we have, we, we really want to, Humpy to show us the moves because this is a quite an interesting idea and quite rare one. Um, are you, let's say, um, like, you, did you say you're a Grunfeld kind of player or not? Well, I'm not, but Katarina Lagno is. Yeah, 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 that's uh, for I'll sure. I'll tell you, I think I figured out Humpy's concept, right? Because there's no pawn on d4, there's nothing, you know, for Black's pawn to put pressure on. And so she's just attacking that pawn, which was surprisingly difficult to defend because, like, well, what could you really do? I mean, you can't put your queen into the pin, right? Correct. So uh, what are the options for protecting that pawn? It's actually pretty tricky. So I do like, you know, Humpy kind of being tricky here. Solid with black and uh, tricky with white, not really letting Katarina play uh, her opening so easily. And okay, so Katarina makes a big decision, actually sacrificing a pawn and going queen d3 to put the queen on a powerful square that doesn't allow white to castle, also attacking e4. That's a very smart concept here. You sacrifice the pawn for activity, for dynamics, and you say, like, especially in Blitz, it works super good because you, your opponent doesn't have much time to figure out how to respond. And uh, queen e2, not possible, queen b1. Rook b6 has just followed, uh, putting the rook away out of the attack, also attacking the... I won't say it's actually attacking the c6 pawn because, you know, sometimes you don't want to take those pawns because they will just open your opponent's bishop. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I'm not so sure, like, White wants to grab that next one. But I guess the point really is just that on Queen E4, you can at least have Queen E2 without hanging your rook. Right? Yeah, that's and the most important. actually important. wants to go Queen E2 anyway, because it's really important to get castled. Yeah, that's the most important. I agree. And Queen E4 check, Queen E2, preparing castle. And look at the evaluation bar. It says that, that White is better. So uh, was that fall? Wasn't that, like... Wasn't that pawn sack justified after all? Yeah, well, you know, I think she did a reasonable thing for a blitz game, Katarina. I mean, her, her position was just not that easy. The issue is that Humvee came up with something pretty good here. And you see how that bishop is biting down on that pawn. That's really the problem for black. They have the bishop pair, but it's not giving them like enormous counterplay. Uh, because this bishop on g7 is restricted. Of course, this bishop has a lot of power, actually over here and yeah i mean white just wants to go rugby one play on the b file yeah and that makes total sense also um maybe somewhere a5 you know blocking the a6 as a weakness uh also guaranteeing yourself this uh, b6 outpost bishop d5 has just followed uh, 
Not uh, any particular threat, I would say. Just rook h b one, as Zarina suggests, and uh, seems to be a very nice position for white. Also, seems to be you know like one direction, one flow game. Yeah. Whoa. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. I don't think that was a mouse slip. My first thought was that it was a mouse slip, but um, but I think she's preparing c four, which is an interesting positional idea. You're restricting one bishop at the same time you open another bishop so yeah could that be a little bit double-edged yeah i mean c4 it's like it, it definitely it opens this bishop up um but she probably will want to like arrange her pawns like c4 d3 i would say it's true like black can try to get some counterplay against that pawn right because it is very solid on d2 i would say it's a bit less solid on d3 but I mean, I'm pretty sure that this is still a quite a reasonable plan. Um, I don't know if she'll be taking that pawn though. Oh yeah, you think it's not about the pawn at all? Yeah, probably not. I think it's just uh, about improving her situation in the center. So maybe d3 because you know she cannot just stand with her rook protecting that pawn. That's a passive way to use a rook. Correct. So you're basically saying that White here says that I'm fine activating g7 bishop because it doesn't actually attack anything yet. Indeed, it has a nice diagonal, but this diagonal, there is not much a thing to do. So uh, she just Ooh, prefers to, to so close. She, yeah, she offers Katarina a pretty unpleasant bishops of opposite color endgame, which, you know, this is a wow. little bit of a surprising decision because normally when you're better, you don't want to give your opponent the chance to play bishops of opposite color, right? But she's, uh, you know, it's a little bit of almost like a psychological move. She's saying, all right, like you can, maybe I, maybe my, you know, you'll have some drawing chances because of the bishops of opposite color, but it's still going to be unpleasant for you and you're going to have to suffer. You're not going to have that two bishops kind of counterplay. Yeah, that's correct. So I feel like that's it's, a, you know, it was, it was a good, it was a good psychological move by Humphrey. Yeah, yeah. So it was also once again a good practical decision because when you get the technical position with a small edge, you can play it here and there, just push the clock, and you improve slowly by, but surely. And your opponent can easily make mistakes because it's, it's too complicated to defend that kind of tough positions when you don't have any counterplay at all. Yeah, I love the move a five. Um, okay. I do think we will be seeing that at some point. I mean, this move is fine. I guess she's stopping c5. You see how passive black is here, right? It's not a draw just because we have bishops of opposite color, because these True. rooks are actually way more passive than white's rooks. Yeah, it's super, super common to go and play opposite colored bishops when you have rooks on the board, because this is how you can easily outplay your opponent. Just having those two rooks changes everything, in fact. Yeah, did you see she, I kept pointing to the square, guys. She finally put the pawn there because, you know, just a good positional move. Make sure you fix the target on a6. It's an important concept in chess that you uh, don't let your opponent's weaknesses uh, uh, move away for, from, your, from your grasp. Absolutely. And now rook, second rook to the B file. Now we have a total control of the only open file here in the position. And I guess the question is what white is going to do next. Is it going to be pushing some pawns on the king side? Is it going to be improve the king, bring it, to, let's say, to c3? Maybe, oh, maybe bring the king to c5. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess black is, I mean, I would say maybe rook b3 is a pretty good move here, just to, like, have that pawn be overprotected. Um, I suppose, you know, yeah, rook b7, interesting. I mean, you want to kind of, like, be a little careful with that pawn. So what now? Take, take and rook b6, I suppose, and then I'm rook d7, d4. Maybe first rook b6. Maybe you don't have to take on c7 because your opponent doesn't threaten to mm. uh, to to take back. Otherwise, there the e7 is going to be a very big pain. Yeah, I mean, in oh, game. interesting, interesting. Yeah, I see your point. So like here, 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 and then they can't even like go e5. Well, first of all, this pawn is under attack, and they can't. Move. Oh yeah, you can take first e5. Check no. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, you can even take an e7. Take yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> this is like capturing did, points. Did, did I say e5? Too too difficult for me. No, no, that was just my yeah. idea. You know? yeah. uh, all right. So she did play rook b6, takes, takes. Oh wow, wait, is this on the board? Is this 
I think that is, mm-hmm. oh wait, no, she's not on the board mm-hmm. yet. Oh yeah, it is on the board. Yeah, it is. It is on the board. I was I'm like, that's just my fantasy variation, but no. No, uh, no, we predicted. Yeah, that's correct. Rook E7. So she actually just did wind up giving away that pawn. And yeah, yeah Humpy's pretty G8, dominating D4. here. That's what we have. Yeah, extra pawn. I mean, like, the problem for this rook is that she can't even, like, get an open file because white can so easily take that away from her. So is she going to try to maybe offer up a rook trade and hope that the single bishop endgame is going to be good? Yeah, I guess white will be declining that. I mean, there's. I don't believe white will ever be trading rooks in this kind of position. No, 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 never. Trading rooks would would mean would actually mean to uh, to to agree for a draw because it's only with as we said in the beginning, it's only with. Yeah, and you know, I think white's plan here is just to go d5 and simply push up that pawn up the board. And Katarina, it seems to be hard for her to find a move here. So she goes bishop c2. And I suppose d5, bishop b3, d6, bishop c4. I mean, it does feel like you're just promoting your pawn. So I feel like Humphy, she could play d5 and just take that opportunity. OK, so she doesn't. Um, yeah, she's playing a little, maybe king c3, a little tentatively, I would say. I mean, kind of giving that you know, rook a chance to come down. But OK, it should still be good. But you know, rook c1 is a bit of a threat. You know, yes, it's becoming very random. Oh, bishop there, interesting. What's the point of that? Bishop c5, I guess, or just for b8? Ah, a7. Okay, well, Katarina, yeah, now she's going to lose. She is going to lose. Wow, Humpy j jumps out to a two-point lead. And I got to say, I just like the way she's playing. It's like the chess has been good. She hasn't been getting lucky. All right, we're back in another Petrov. D6, knight f3, okay. Same line that we already had. So where are the players going to differ? This is exactly like their first game. I believe in the first game, Katarina Logno played queen b3. Here she goes, knight c3. But all right, the queen does often come out to b3. So knight takes, uh-huh. Well, I don't think we'll be seeing a black queen on d7. <laughs> it wasn't exactly the best square for her to go to in the first game. Knight d7. Yeah, very solid position, right? She's like, you know, going for these positions that maybe like a little bit worse, or maybe white has some initiative, but once black neutralizes that initiative, black, of course, has a fundamentally sound position. When will we ever see a Vienna in one of these? Uh, yeah, in, Do in Domini, I, I have to disappoint you. I don't know that we're going to be seeing a Vienna in today's match. And let's see, by the way, you guys, um, you guys asked me about my book. Yeah, that's, I thought that was kind of cool. I just, uh, that was like found it amongst all my things. And I was like, let me put that out here. It's uh, called She Plays to Win. Um, and yeah, it's actually, if you look closely, that's, uh, <laughs> I, I got on the cover of that book. So yeah. Um, and it's basically, you know, featuring top women players uh, and their best games. So by the way, I think my best game that made it into that book is from the Petrov opening that we have right here. So let's see this last move by a Katarina. It's very interesting. Bishop E7. Ah. So like I can tell you, I mean, she's trying to get the rook to the seventh, right? But also I think there's some cool tricks that she had in mind. Like for example, rook E8, there could have been something like that. And I think that was actually what Kat Katarina had in mind, like where she just leaves her bishop hanging, goes for the attack on f7, which is very difficult for black to protect. So Humpy, very careful there with her move knight b6. Okay, now probably bishop d6 needs to be played, queen d6. And what can we say here, guys? Well, we can say, I think Humpy fans can be happy because her position is perfectly normal um, and she is neutralizing Katarina's E4 again. 
So Black goes rookie eight. And we start fighting for the e-file. And I suppose, I mean, white will want to like put a knight on a square like that at some point. And black might, yeah, black needs to figure out um, actually what they're doing with this knight because there is a little bit of pressure. The knight on b6 is still misplaced. Uh, perhaps queen c7. Well, this fork needs to be met with something. So you got to move your queen given that you can't really move your knight. So where do we move that queen? And you got to protect that pawn. So yeah, I'm advocating for queen c7, which is what she played. Um, all right. So, well, I would say white has a little bit of an initiative of these pawns. We can definitely see them pushing up the side pawn soon. Very typical device used against knights on b6 or g6 is that you launch your side pawn against them to, to kind of disturb them. So I feel like there's a bit of work to be done to equalize this position for Humphy. Yeah, she's going to, oh, wow, she's down two minutes on the clock in this game. Um, and I mean, is white's threat just as simple as c5? It does appear to be. Uh huh. So black goes c5. Interesting. Good move. I like it. I mean, d5 will need to be played, right? I don't think white really has that much of a choice because, I mean, they can't really let this get captured. I don't really believe in any other move. Um, and now Humpy just needs to, well, her knight's pretty decent here, but of course, this is the typical square for the knight right in front of the pawn. Uh, she'll want to get it there. If she gets it there, her position will actually be, dare I say it, better. Uh, because this pawn can become a bit of a weakness and the deep pawn will be blocked. Humpy fans, sounds great. Yeah, Humpy is a beast. All right, yeah. I see we got some fans of Humpy here. And Humpy just made an active queen move, attacking that pawn. Like, I, you know, I was kind of thinking that pawn could become a target if the knight was on d6, but sure, it's a target from c4 as well. Welcome back, Dina. Thank you, Irina. Wow, 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 wow. As I said previously, the temperature on the board is so hot that it makes uh, all my tech stuff uh, disconnect and... Uh, yeah, well, it's... Uh, how hot is it, speaking of the temperature right now on, uh, on the board between uh, Katarina Lagno and Humpy Conero? Okay, I would say it's a, it's not too hot. We're not sweating yet, Dina. Um, all right, pretty, all right. Yeah, it's, it's pretty calm. Uh, Black just played queen f4 and white traded. And okay, so there's this problem with the pawn. White is trying to respond in an active way, which is a nice idea. I mean, I suppose I would think about like something like rookie four um, in this position or even rookie two. All right, so she just goes queen c, uh, rook c8, stopping queen c5. Nice, and uh, I see it's 2 0. So, the game that we were commenting just before, Humpy managed to win, right? With that, uh, yeah, she won uh, that one. The, the Grunfeld, yeah, yeah, correct. The Grunfeld, Ooh, wow, what a nice opening, uh, by far for, for Humpy. For now, all right. So um, the pawn on c4 is is a problem. I agree with that. Um, 92 not possible because of obvious uh, queen takes d2. Rook c1 not possible either. What's going yeah. on? It's it's kind of um, unpleasant, I'd say. Yeah, well, you know, she can't even yeah she can't even play the basic move g3. So she wants to take care of her back rank. She might play h3. I mean, this is not really such a big threat at the moment because if you take I'll take, you take, and at the end, I get the pawn. So I'm not even sure, like, Black wants to take it immediately. Black might want to play moves like h6. Just, uh, it's very typical that when you're close to the end game, you give your king a square. So you don't have to worry about those back rank checkmates. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think even if Black is not going to immediately take this pawn, um, they, they're thinking about it. Maybe I wonder if, like, a4 is a move. A4, a4, I like over, that. Yeah. Pushing the pawn to A5 and A6 and also like kicking the knight away. That's a very nice positional move. Ooh, H3 instead H3. happened. 
Yeah, the other pawn move. Okay. I mean, yeah. like, not you know, a to avoid, yeah, also to avoid the, um, as they say, the, um, the back rank mank could also m- mate, could also be a wise idea. Exactly. Yep. So, I mean, both sides just taking care of their back rank problems now, and the ball is in white's court again. So. Again, so we expect A4 would be the most logical move here for Katarina. She's thinking A4 with the idea A5. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, because she also... can't really improve the knight, right? That's the problem. Exactly, exactly. And you, you, what do you want to improve here? The queen is okay. The rook is also okay. Everything is active. So you're kind of like, oh, what, is the, what is the other option? What is the choice? So she does go A4. And I guess black needs to figure out, I mean, if they take on C4, queen B7 does look a little annoying. I mean, I guess you have rook C7 there, but yeah. And then you can also take with a queen, but then, okay, how do we evaluate this position? Like who's, who's better here? I mean, do you just go like A5 and protect your pawn and not let white take it and you're probably fine. I guess uh, that's a reasonable option for Humpy. Um, but she does have like a big decision to make here and she is getting into a critical sort of time situation to make this big decision. Yeah, it's true. Um, what was the opening of this game? I'm just curious to know, like you don't have to show it was me. It Petrov say- again, Dina. Oh, same. So right. I think they're going to have that opening over and over again in this match. Oh. You know, there's, there's not so much that Katarina can do to avoid it, right, as an E4 player. True, 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 true. That makes sense. Yeah, we, in the previous match between um, Ho Yifan and Chris Aib, I was just uh, praising the fact that with Ho Yifan, you see so many different openings all the time in the same match. Unlike we saw in the previous match, we commentated together between, uh, was it Daisy Corey and Katarina Lagno? And yet we are again with Katarina Lagno. So we are, we'll soon become experts with Katarina Lagno, huh, Irina? Yeah, she, well, you know, she definitely has her favorite openings. Not only the Grunfelds is black, I mean, also the King's Indian, right? Those are her main, I think, openings for black, those two. Um, I don't know if she has something more solid in her opening repertoire. Uh, and as white, I mean, she can play D4. It's not out of the question, but just E4 is more of her main move uh, from childhood. And <gasps> now she's better, right? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Was there a blunder? Well, I think the blunder was blundering this pawn because now the knight is forced to move and uh, maybe even rook b7 here could be quite powerful because yeah. after rook there, the rook just starts going on the uh, seventh rank. Well, maybe that wasn't the best, but that was, we had the same idea okay. there. Queen c1, queen f4. Ooh, is she going she, she to get a draw, Humpy? No, there is knight oh, the, g1. IG1. Oh, Humpy took this pawn. Okay. Wow. Really suspenseful. She's down oh. for like no time. I don't know if she can yeah. handle it. This is really tough. F6. Yeah. Okay. And maybe not so bad, but mm-hmm. should she try the trick with Queen H8? Uh-huh. Okay. I mean, good oh. stuff from Humpy. She's still like staying alive, but it's tough. Where does the knight go? Queen e6 only move. Queen, oh yeah. And this he is finally be found a per- perpetual. perpetual. Yeah. Wow. Amazing defense from Humpy. I mean, that was really tough for her. And uh, wow. Okay. Very uh, impressive. Oh, look at Humpy. <laughs> With your body language, you can see that she was uh, she was relieved. She looked really relieved on that uh, after right. that draw. But you know what? I mean, a draw after two losses for Katarina Lagna is also an okay result. It's not that bad because you kind of need to stop losing was flow first in order to, to go for Oh, yeah, after. yeah. I see that reaction by Humpy. Wow, she took in a deep breath after that game. Yeah, no, that was really hard for her. That was a, a really good defense on so little time. And now they're back to the Grunfeld. And again, it seems like, uh, well, Katarina is going to have to come up with something new here because that previous Grunfeld didn't work so well. Correct. And Humpy's prepared for this move as well, right? So uh, wow. I think in the previous game, Black played C5. This time, uh, Katarina castled, like not allowing this Bishop B5, like check and pin idea. And now 
Is this a completely different direction, H4, H5? It is actually a completely different direction. And also the, the double-edged part of playing h5 is that you have this g5 square where the knight and the bishop can go also sometimes i'm like asking myself isn't this h5 actually is only in white's favor but at the same time i know that if black doesn't play h5 then white will be the one pushing the h1 it's gonna be just as unpleasant as uh, as the g5 square yeah black has to go c5 because that's the whole grunfeld idea and now Question is, okay, so how is she like preparing for this move? How does she want to defend her center? Uh-huh. All right, so knight c6. I mean, maybe she will be playing a move like e5 at some point. It's actually not out of the question. Just because of the presence of that move, it's so much harder for black to play f6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you on this one. Um, so what is different in this setup, in this Grunfeld setup from, let's say, the, the classical Grunfeld? Is it only the H pawns that makes yeah, the whole mainly, make the whole difference? Yeah, also, I mean, I guess we're basically in a rugby one Grunfeld, right? So normally, um, Black also has ideas of taking on Queen A5 and trying to win that pawn, right? So that's probably, I mean, I don't know how these moves are going to play into that. Humpy needs to figure that out because if she goes bishop e3, like definitely taking on queen a5 check is what a Grunfeld player is going to be thinking about. And right. the subtle piece, Dina, you know, of like who these moves favor uh, in the, you know, compared to the usual rugby one line, honestly, I don't know. Ooh, but Humpy plays a much more interesting move. Like, she just sacks that pawn with check. I mean, that's actually a pretty cool idea. It is common enough for the Grunfeld, um, but that was nice. Wow, bishop d2 and queen takes d2. And uh, seems like uh, white is having this center, a perfect position for attacking, and no need to rush with the king. And uh, wow, I don't see any single, uh, any, any single problem for, like, let's say, a down, negative part of uh side of this position for white yeah white has a uh, nice position i think i like what humpy went for she just is going for d pawn versus b pawn stronger center now i was just wondering how is she going to defend i think queen d2 because going to an end game nice to get the king like somewhere active and um yeah i mean i also like the um you know this where she's steering the position because this is where humpy is definitely good and there's no particular like i mean yeah, of course katarina can play end games right but you know lisa doesn't allow her much scope for tactics for attacking where which uh where's where she excelled so now the question for humpy like is there a d6 or do you need to go bishop c4 Right, kind of a big, big moment for white. Or do you just ignore everything and go like rook c1 and uh, you know try to get your rook to the seventh? Yeah, that would be a total dream come true, having the rook on the seventh rank. I mean, who would not want that? And uh, besides, here we play an end game, and the king is in the in the center for white. And you know, king is the strongest piece in the end game. So whenever you bring the king to uh, to uh, uh oh, Ooh, that move surprised Wait. me a lot. I was literally about to Wait. say yeah. d six. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say that this is the one move that will not happen. Like I was that confident. I was about to explain to you guys like d d takes e six will not be played and yet we see it played why is it played i don't get it well, i mean she's helping her opponent neither do i develop, develop her pieces well this is so weird like in the worst case you can just play bishop c4 and if pawn takes then you take with the pawn or with the bishop like bishop is six rook b7 rook d8 maybe mm. Maybe something like Humpy was afraid of equalizing, but once again, it's just, this is just so not natural and so not human. I mean, yeah, you, you don't stick with a pawn. You know, I think this move that we mentioned was actually Bishops. Uh, probably quite good because here... D6, yeah. You know, the problem is, okay, if there's rook D8, you go E5, right? So you just get your protected pass pawn, everything is good. But if they go there, she, I mean, she probably didn't like this line where she thought like she might lose that pawn. But actually, you're not really losing it, right? Like, you are keeping it. Your king is beautiful on e3. And, you know, if they go there, like, you take, you get a lot of activity with your rook on the seventh and the pawn. So she really, I mean, this was a very critical moment for white if white wanted to have an advantage. And unfortunately, she chose, like, you know, 
to give away you know, most of that advantage. So, you know, mostly I like Humpy's decisions, right? But, uh, but this one, I can't agree with Dina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, well, well, well. No, many lines, of course, uh, here. And uh, okay, let's see what we have here for the current position. There is still the active king. So let's say there is still there is still the, the rook on the seventh frame. So, um, so that being said, white still has their their pluses in this position, yeah. regardless of of that the weird the take on on e six. Yeah, actually, you know, Dina, I kind of like I'm starting to see more of what. She, I mean, first of all, she's just up a pawn at the moment, mm. right? So she's up a pawn, and her point was that Black couldn't really capture it back because of Rook A1, and she actually remains up a pawn and trying to win that end game with pawns on one side of the board. So Katarina tries this and goes for activity, right, with like the Rooks wanting Correct. to come down, and she just goes. So instead of taking the second pawn, she goes to neutralize her. And, Correct. you know, I mean, actually, like, it does feel like, uh, well, Black hasn't really solved all their problems because they're still down a pawn. And uh, White's King is great. White's Rook is great. Like, actually, Humpy, Humpy, I think is making her point here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that also uh, speaks to me more and more uh, openly. But, I mean... I'm I'm definitely still more skeptical in a way. Um, where can we say more? This position, if you look at it, this end game, we got everyone has a bishop, light squared bishop, but all black pawns on the king side, f7, g6, h5, are on the same color as the bishop. So normally it's it's very bad. It's very easy to to make use of this of this weakness for for white and. Uh, this could be one another, you know, example of a classical domination of bad bishop versus of good bishop versus bad bishop. Yeah, and I think um, I mean the real problem for black is that these pawns are still on the board, like because that's keeping the black rook on a eight passive. Um, yeah, and this Humpy's not gonna give her an easy time of it at all. Like I think she's trying to move up her pawn maybe to a six where it's gonna be protected and like quite close to the queening square. Um, and yeah, so I mean, she... if the rook cannot move, then black is gonna have a problem. Yeah, in general, you know, pushing the A pawn in any end game, and just as well as H, H pawn, is always good because uh, it can, you know, it it approaches the, it takes more space, and it gives you ideas to always to trade rooks. It gives you extra outposts. So, so A five, A six, uh, it's it's good just in any end game. Yeah, I wonder if you know if Black should be playing A five themselves, right? Because I really don't want to like let that pawn get up to A six. I think. I mean, I know it's on a light square, and my bishop is light square, so that's not perfect. But I still think the pawn overall would be quite good there. Okay, so she's trying to stop it from moving, which makes sense. I suppose rook d4 is really is really the main move, isn't it? Um, and rook d4 preparing... seems nice. There is also bishop b5. Bishop b5, but there is a6, bishop c6. It's weird. I, I wouldn't suggest that I think we, we need this bishop there where it is, so... So yes, rook d4, but why Humpy is thinking? That's the well, question. She's thinking she because rook d4, there's rook a3, and if the king moves there, like black moves back the rook and tries to get like that draw by repetition. So she, that's why she avoids it in favor of bishop yeah. b5. All right, good call. Bishop a6. b5. Mm -hmm. Oh, so she wow. Her another pawn? I mean, oh, she's trying to bluff her, yeah? But Humpy... I, I would never call it as a blunder, but... Yeah, oh. so king e2, right? So humpy two is like the safe option, trying to protect her second wow. line. There was, of course, yeah, there was like a we we could of course think about what would have happened if white would have taken that pawn. I'm sure it wasn't so Definitely. clear, but but she wants to keep it safe because she's got 15 seconds, so that makes sense. Maybe something like rook c8 to c2 would be uh, like attacking the whole second rank and then getting at least one pawn. But at the same time, even if you trade one pawn of king side for white versus a7 pawn is still a passer for white. So I would still doubt this decision. Yeah, I think if she goes there, I think I'm going to take and go king e3. And then I was thinking, give me a few checks. Like I can even hide my king on g3, go f3. So I'm protecting g2 and I kind of hold my king side while I win that pawn. Correct. Rook A1. 
Yeah. Okay, so seven, seven, bishop okay. c4. Nice try. Oh, you and it's a double attack. Go for that endgame. I think I would go for that. Uh-huh. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Nice. Nice, I think. Isn't she winning that pawn? I mean, I guess maybe it's not Wait, that big of a deal. But are we going to win this? Yeah, you can't go there because you get mated. Wow. Ooh. Oh, mated one! Oh, wow, there was mate. There was mate at one. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. my gosh. Oh, oh my no. lord. Oh, she's just winning. Oh, lens. oh wait, wait. Oh, is she my... winning here? I think she is because she's probably going to win that pawn, king g2 and like rook g5. There was rook h2 wow. stopping the king from coming. <gasps> this wow. is so smart. Oh, wow. The famous, this is, I mean, she could still draw this. This is actually yes. a position. Wasn't she for an option? I gotta G4? tell you, it's really hard to it's really hard to to draw this, but I mean, maybe, okay, to defend, maybe. I mean, yeah, it's actually now she is in a drawing position, so it's actually not maybe not that hard. It's, it's still hard. I mean, it's obviously a lot harder to play for black, but like, but her king is in a good place on f six. Wow, I could draw this. It wouldn't be crazy to. Okay, that, okay, I, and and what if pushing the okay, king back can... though? So white's making some progress. King yeah, five, you know. And like maybe like check or something. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, I nice. nice. F four. I don't know. I would. Wait, what? Rook G four. Wait. Yes. I why she just hung Push. that one? Okay. Check. So, do you Rook have G6? to keep the the king on that file? On that file. The king was good on F file. I think there's. Yeah, even... it's, yeah, it's better it on that file than on H file, right? Yes. yes. It can, I think that you can also have it on H file. But what you don't want is to get it cut on the back rank. And as you see, the black king is getting closer to being pushed to the back rank. But now she seems yeah. to be finding some sort of like she needs to move her rook again. She needs to like. No, don't repeat the position third yeah. time. Yeah, I hope I hope she doesn't accidentally do that. Move the rook. Now. All right. So oh, but, yeah, no. how does she yeah. win this? Yeah, this is this is really looks. I mean, even to me, it looks like a draw. All right, okay, but I mean, still a little tricky. Ooh, I mean, it still is a little tricky. But she can't Ooh. really win this. Yeah, no, log. The most important is not to flag here. She's doing a good job of holding this position. Oh, wait, 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 what? B five. What? Rook b five. There was rook b five. Where was that rook b five? Oh. Where's that rook b5? All right, so now it's going to be a draw. Yeah, rook h. Okay, wow. <gasps> that rook b5. Oh, that was insane. Oh, gosh. Okay, so, so oh! I mean, basically, what? What? Wait, what? Did she just oh! blend a rook? Black one? Like, oh, oh, man. Oh, my lands. Oh, man. I got to see Humpy's face when this oh, happens. Oh, my oh, lands. That's so sad. That Did you see insane. that face palm? Oh, that she was, was already it. unhappy. Oh, oh my God! She just did like that. Oh man! Oh yeah! yeah. No, Humpy, I, I feel your pain. That was horrible. Wow! Oh, man, she just gave her free points. I mean, totally free point for nothing, and she was just totally winning. Oh, I can imagine that's. But you're gonna show. Got to show your resilience now. Oh gosh! Well, that you know, was quite I mean, the gift for us. It's obviously exciting because Katarina gets back to 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 the game, to the fight, and uh, yeah. but yeah, that was it's uh... exciting. You know, me, I gotta tell you, I'm a little uh -huh. bit of like a chess purist that way, Dina. I just want the, you know, I want the normal result to happen on the board from the, you know, from the players, uh, kind of uh, following from from the players' play, right? Absolutely. So for me. Yeah, for me, that blunder, I mean, as much as I want Katarina to be in the match, but I want her to win the games on the board and not through, like, something like that. Yeah, but I mean, it's also like Katarina did not try to do anything anything bad here, yeah? I mean, yeah, th yeah. there was the maiden one that white missed. Yeah, there was this, uh, yeah. I think, G4 instead of G takes uh, H4. But, uh, but okay, we got a new game, and we are almost close to another end game. I mean, we're, we're in the middle game, but everything has just exchanged yeah, so, so fast. Only up by one, only up by one after four games. Yeah. Yeah. Let's could've see been, what could have been way more, but all right. I mean, she could have had like three and a half to half, right? That would have been, I mean, just that, that checkmate in one, that would have been enough. Yes, exactly. Oh. I mean, I'll, I'll play G4, but on H4, G4, I mean, I, for me, it sounded so much more natural. 
yeah. that they choose I mean, for a pawn, you just you just win it anyway. Well, I'm trying to like go back just to see that position where she literally had so checkmate in one move, right? She just needed to go rook f8 checkmate. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but that that was like in the way they were super super fast. Like you may yeah. maybe you missed it, but the, like remember when the point that after h4, I think it's just g4. You you push the pawn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You keep the two connected pawns, but. Um, Either way, right now we have a new game, we have a new position, and uh, mm. it seemed to me that opponents played so fast this opening moves. Is it because they have already repeated it, right? We have already seen this structure before, so we have yeah. already seen this opening before. Yeah, we've seen this one. So she's going for this position for the second time. Katarina, they've already had this. Let me just see where they played differently. I don't remember Bishop G5. Actually, Bishop G5 was played already. In her previous game, she tried that move. Right, and she tries it again. So this is actually all the same. Uh, it's not a great sign for Katarina because this reminds me a little bit of the match Shuvalova versus Tan, where Shuvalova kept hitting her head against the same, uh, against the same, you know, four, you know, playing the same four knights, Scotch, and getting nowhere with it, and. Um, it's not, you know, it's not so good that Katarina, like, isn't really able to veer off of this, I would say. I mean, she's going quite far along their, their you know, uh, well-trodden path already. And in general, you know, I think she should try to keep the game more complicated than this against Humphy. Correct. Yeah. And now we got this queen on c4, uh, offering queen trades. So the end game, I'd say... I honestly say it's good for black, although the engine says it's kind of uh oh yeah, okay, engine is agrees for me. It's it's more or less equal. Um and one thing I do have to say is that this pawn structure reminds me of uh, scotch for knights with colors reversed. Yeah, I mean, I don't see anything great about this position. A5 will be played 100 percent Humphrey's gonna do this move. Just yeah. watch, you know, just watch it. <laughs> I'm watching. Can I, can I predict? Um, yes. Let's see. yes. <laughs> really, I, like, I put my money on I mean, you. I mean, okay, let me tell you another move she could play. Okay, there's one other move she could play, maybe F6. Oh, nice. Yeah, because, you know, here's the thing. I mean, A5 is very good, but white will try to trade off the nine. Okay, wow, look at that. I didn't guess the move, um, but that was, Ooh. I had fun trying. B6. What's the point of B6? Preparing C5? No, preparing. Yeah, I see. By the way, I see now the computer. Like I did look at look just now at the engine. The computer liked F6. I don't know if that's. I mean, I don't, I don't know if those moves. There was a big difference between them, but yeah, F6 was also logical because you see what just happened. White went in to trade the strong black knight. Nice. That actually is it's a very wise decision. It was the strongest piece of black, and also it was a piece that was in opponents in, in white's camp. And usually the rule is whenever you have an opponent piece in your part of the territory, you need either to change it, to change change it, or to chase it, yeah, to kick it out. Another thing that I want to point out is that c4, c5, f4, and f5 are the strongest squares for knights. So whenever the knight comes to c4, it's like a, a monster dominating on the board. Just throwing at you those, you know, uh, uh, classical rules of Soviet chess school, uh, wondering what you think about them. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, that was interesting, Dina. Like, I didn't realize, I never thought about that exactly, that those, you said those are the four strongest squares for a knight, right? But I agree. I yeah. mean, every knight loves to, you know, get to F5 because that's close to the king, right? So, I mean, I, I totally agree. These actually are very... Uh, Powerful squares for the knights because they're higher up the board than the C3 and you know, F3 squares. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. But what is interesting is that in a way they're even stronger than, let's say, if you have a choice between putting the knight on E5 or F5, on F5 it might be stronger. I mean, now it's really funny because, yeah, Black has to think about the king and pawn endgame, which normally we like to enter very carefully if we don't know exactly how to evaluate it. But, you know, in this position, she's just like, look, it can't be that bad for me. There's nothing about it that looks like it should be a problem. How about Rook F4? Ooh, a Rook F4. Pretty, yeah, I mean, you could do it. Nice. Rook F4 is, I love it. 
I really love it. Yeah, and after rook c6, rook a4, if on one side, if there's one side that is fighting for a win, it's definitely black. Yeah, so basically, so my comments on what I see going on in the match is that uh, Humpy's openings are definitely better. Like she has managed to catch her opponent kind of in from both sides with white and with black. With black in the sense that, you know, she's chosen something solid that she's comfortable with. And Katarina is struggling to really not just like, you know, win games with white, right? It's just like to get chances to win, to set, a, set yourself up to play a game where you can show some of your strengths, right? We haven't seen that Katarina really getting that big chance as white. So, um, yeah, so it's been successful for Humpy in that sense. And as White herself, I mean, she's putting pressure on Katarina's Grunfeld on both games. I mean, she could have just taken two out of two, right? Yes. Yes, so, yes, yes, I absolutely agree with you. And to me as well here, uh, Humpy's opening choices seem extremely dominant. Now, um, maybe Katarina is like, a, for now, is, is, let's say, fighting. She has to be fighting more. So she's like in the bigger fighter in a way right now but uh definitely also we need to see how this game is going to finish because the previous game was a very big uh, let's say psychological misfortune for for humpy and it's super important to overcome it because imagine if one more accident like this happens in this game then it's going to be a very difficult thing to recover from for humpy yeah, I mean, it's, see, it's hard to see how this could go really go wrong for Humpy. I mean, she... <laughs> well, I that mean, was it, this it's just a dead draw, well. you know, just a dead draw. I mean, Humpy yeah. would be drawing here even easily, even without that pawn on B6. But yeah, I do think that this game will end in a draw. But I think that, you know, I think that Katarina... Need, well, here's the thing. Maybe her strategy is just like, all right, I got 30 more minutes of 5 plus 1. Then I get a break. Maybe, you know... Uh, I can get some advice or, you know, figure something out how I can change things up for the three plus one. So I just got to like sort of hang in here with white. We're only within one point. It's not that big of a problem. And I'm going to try to overtake her in the faster time control. So there is that logic, right? I, I get that, that maybe you're not going to try to do as much in the five minute. But on the other hand, Dina, I think there's also logic to be like, okay, let me switch things up now and just try a different line against, you know, E4, E5. Because certainly, you know, she can do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. And about that advice could very much be possible because Katerina, Katerina's husband, Alexander Grishuk, is like world's strongest grandmaster. And uh, having him around, hopefully at home, at the moment of the match, could actually change uh, a lot of things uh, for, for the second portion. But I mean, that being said, speculating obviously because humpy can also get advice from coach or whatever and uh well um for now for me it's clear that humpy is the one who's leading the match i'd say a draw after previous accident is good for humpy but also a draw is good for katarina because it gives her time to you know to get into the match it seems it has been so for me that katarina is the one who needs to get into the game more right now yeah, and now she does choose to go after the A2 pawn. So I think in their previous game, Dina, trying to remember what exactly it was. Oh, that was a really cool pawn sack that Humpy Ooh. came up with. I loved that idea. I think that was one of the coolest moves in the match so Correct. far. And this time, Lagno's like, no, I don't need that anymore. Let's go for your A2 pawn. Let's go into a regular kind of main line. I wonder, I mean, Bishop D2, you would think is a main move. I don't know really what... Humpy's thinking about, yeah, you got to give up that pawn and then just, I guess, castle. Yeah, castle I, seems the most yeah. natural. It's time. It's about time to put your king into the safer place. Yeah, it's really funny because it's like, again, this is a totally theoretical position, except these pawns are here. And I, I don't know this line enough to know, um, like, who that is helping. I would, I guess I would mm -hmm. guess, if I had to guess, yeah, I think I would say it helps white. Because I think much more likely that this square will be useful for them than, um, g4 for black yeah makes sense um rig b7 i think is of course a yeah. possibility here also one more thing i would add is that to g5 both of white pieces can enter either bishop or knight and even knight would be more powerful than bishop because bishop you want to keep him you know a little bit from the back uh stage of playing in the game while yeah compared to b8 uh, knights and also oh sorry yeah, B8. One more thing, one more very important detail. Black's, Black is having a fianchetto bishop. 
G6 is a weakness. So having the pawn on G6 makes G5 more weakness than the compared to G2, let's say G3 and G4. Yeah, I think like the main two moves here for white are D5 or rook D7, right? So, I mean, black is threatening to take, take, and like take. Yeah, rook b7 makes sense. I wonder what is the main theory here. I just cannot remember because, um, okay, I mean, d5, I suppose, right? You're just making me play the move. move. Yeah, <laughs> you're making me play it, so I guess I'll play it. I want to play it anyway, so why do you ask me to do it? Of course I'll do yeah. it. But see, Humpy, um, Humpy is taking some time. She doesn't play it immediately. Perhaps she... What is the alternative? Or let's see, what is the thing that worries her? Maybe it's bishop f3, bishop f3 and knight d4 or knight d5, no, something like this. Yeah, I mean, d5, d5 is too one. natural to resist, right? So yeah. Um, bishop f3. Now she can six. think a little bit about that, but probably she's, I mean, probably it's just not that take. good. Yeah. No, you that. you take with a bishop. No, 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 no. Otherwise, you're like yeah. e4 pawn, otherwise it's going to be falling. Yeah, yeah. And, no, no. 94. Okay. Okay. So rookie seven, she's going to take, she's going to double the pawns, bishop f6. This is actually really interesting. And I would say, Dina, that this move is really on the table. Like, I don't think that you should just say no to it just because you get a little damage to your pawn structure, because it's also quite typical, you know, uh, that you're, you're really placing your bet kind of on your center pawn. So like, yes, black can go and get h4 pawn but this king is actually still pretty safe and hmm. um you know when you like put your bishop there or like d6 coming i think she can look at that and what did she do so she went for a safer move i would say right bishop c3 but not bad or bishop e3 yeah so white here doesn't want to ruin their pawn structure even though arena told us that it's not a big deal well maybe it's just the style maybe it's just uh humpy who always plays you know this a solid way you do not create your extra weaknesses why do you need if you can do without it and you know the pawn on e7 objectively like honestly speaking between you and me it's gonna fall anyway mm -hmm. i mean between yeah. you and me and the ch and chat it's gonna fall anyway yeah 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 I mean, it's just a question of time because there is this a a five pawn. I mean, this a pawn that that's gonna run. So you also, in a way, need to take care of that. And mm -hmm. with the bishop on g seven, you know, controlling a one. Uh, yeah, th there is some, let's see, compensation for for wide center. Yeah, actually, I just checked, and I see the engine likes this bishop e three move. Um, well, that's good. That's good for Humpy, right? And after a five, okay. So things are definitely going in an interesting direction. So the question is here, fundamental question, what is better, the past A pawn or white's center pawn plus their attack on the king? It's and, indeed a fundamental yeah. question. Rook, uh, I'd say it's about dynamics. So I'd say it's we, we have to see on the tempi. Here it's too hard to, to give the general evaluation without calculating. And uh, it's also hard to calculate because you don't have much time. Players do not have much time. So right now we see rook b8. Um, perhaps white should take on b8, as you say, your rook takes b8. And then d6? Wait, no. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, so it's kind of a big moment here for, for Humpy, right? Because the question is her, for her also, how does she get this rook into the game? I think d6 Correct. makes sense. And I think black has to stop it with... Um, I mean, this is the move that sort of comes to my mind first. Queen e6. Really, Ooh, yeah. you're, and it happens. Ooh, what a nice guess. Congratulations, yeah. Serena. Thank you, Dina. We're playing guess the move here. Yes, <laughs> guess the elo soon released. Rook d1. Okay, rook d1 doesn't really threaten to move the pawn because the bishop on e7 is going to hang. Um, so yeah, like, look, like, well, actually, it's really funny, Dina, because neither side is yet threatening to move their pawn. Like, white can't push their pawn, neither can black. I knew you were going to say that. One thing I do not like about this position is that white is just so more active. The pawn is is so moved further. Also, there is e pawn that can help out. Also, queen a3 blocking but protecting, I mean, helping the d pawn to move because protecting the bishop on e7 i mean queen d7 should be the most expected here for for black and we just see everything and uh like with all the comparison we clearly see that white is the one dominating 
Yeah, I agree. It's, I mean, you can't really discount this pawn because the fact that the bishop can help it promote really makes that pawn dangerous, right? Um, white does have an extra pawn in this position, like this E pawn, but how helpful is it to white? I mean, I don't think it's making a big impact on the game for now. So I actually am not really, uh, yeah, I'm not really ready to like, you know, uh, shut the door on black chances here. But I, I mean, yeah, I think, okay, this is quite a tricky move. They're preparing a three. I guess we can think about queen C7. Um, that's sort of our most obvious move. On which black queen C7 seems logical. Up. Yeah, you know, I also thought about uh, maybe E5 and somewhere F4, F5. I mean, yeah, it's it's taking too much time. But oh, wow, you, you know what she's threatening? I'm so sorry to interrupt you, Dina. This is the threat. Queen C7, Rook B7, sack the queen and go D7. I think this is Humpy's idea. Wait, but what if Rook is getting sucked in an A2? Oh, yeah, you got a Rook to A7. I mean, is this kind of yeah. cool that this is what let's let's see that let's see. But the there is a saver that. here. Oh, maybe it's oh wait, she put it on the, the board. Yeah. Yeah. What well, what's the saver? I don't here? know what the saver is. The saver is queen takes d7 and a2. Oh, because no, yeah, that's what I suggested. But now I understand rook a7 and then a1. Yeah, yep, that's it is queen. The one. Oh, yeah, nice. you just and queen. actually, Humpy is gonna she's still gonna be up a pawn in the bishop endgame. So, but it is Ooh. it should be a draw. It should be a draw in the bishop. Yeah, correct. Endgame. Yeah. Because black's wow. pieces are all black's pawns are all on good colors. Um, and you know, just a single pawn advantage with pawns on one side of the board is not going to be enough for white to win because finally, when white does manage to get a pass pawn, black will just sack the bishop for it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, also I was surprised why um Katarina took some time before playing Queen D7 because it's like the only move you have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Humpy has really no time here. Of course, she also doesn't really have any chances to lose, but she doesn't really have chances to win either because... Just uh, like in the previous game, she didn't have any yeah. chances to lose because she was pulled up and then she just misclicked the rook. So yeah. never say never. But, you know, I'm, I'm just curious about one thing. Was it Humpy that blundered something when going for this line, a rook takes uh, queen c7, or did she do it on purpose? You know, I'm not sure. I'm not, that's a good question to ask, right? Because it could be that she missed. Wait. Yeah, the she's giving back a pawn. Yeah, she's giving back oh, a pawn. Oh, but, but okay. that, okay, there is nothing here. It's okay, there's no, oh, not yeah, much yeah. going on. Yeah. Um, grumpy Humpy, just joking. She's an awesome player, yeah. Um, no, this is a really good match, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying it because I think the quality of the chess is good. I think it's very close and... Um, you know, so far I think it's been more Humpy's match, but but uh, but you know it it you know Katarina just has to last like 22 more minutes <laughs> to get to the three minute, and then I think we're going we might see a turnaround there because that is her forte. You know, she is a multiple time women's world blitz champion, right? You don't uh, you don't get to win it three times uh, just you know by accident, so. Absolutely agree with you. And you know, in that end game, I would I like with the low time that uh, that uh, Humpy was on the clock. I would even continue for Katrina. Obviously, there is not such an easy way to do it. I mean, but just you know, a couple of more uh, you know turns around in order to see like either your opponent's gonna flag or not. But of course, it would be not very let's say polite. Yeah. So she is. They're back at it, back at it in the Petrov. And I guess that is Katarina's strategy. I yeah? just keep kind of going for that same position. That's not really giving her much. Okay, she went back to this one. This is the one where she actually has some pressure on, on Humpy, mm -hmm. right? They're, and it um, does look as a position where you can put the pressure on your opponent because just as we described it already, White has an advantage in the development and uh, some more activity, some more, let's say, um, how you say, yeah, you call it uh, activity? Yeah, space. Yeah, that's the word. Some more space because of the central pawns. Also, when a pawn uh, advances. So I think it's objectively, it's a good position if you believe in it. It's it's not like, you know, you're being stubborn and playing the same opening that, that you prepared. No, it's just objectively a, a good line for here for white. Yeah, well, this one I think actually makes sense because she went back to their first Petrov game where she did have some pressure because there were a few games where she didn't really get much pressure. This one I still think 
um, there are some issues for Black to solve, but they seem to be playing like literally right into that same line, right? Knight d7, a6, queen c8, that was their game, right? So it's, I mean, I, I hope that Katarina has something better prepared here because Humpy did equalize quite okay. Remember, it was that knight of six moves, you know? And then queen yeah. a6, and it really wasn't a bad position for Black. And they're at in the exact same position following 22 moves of the same game. Yeah, 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 totally agree with you. And um, a 95 has just happened on the board. I'm like, okay, F7 is attacked, but uh, there is an easy way to protect it. Like, there is this queen B7. There is also bishop takes E5. And uh, that's it. <laughs> that's all that there is there. But um, I feel like uh, with a few pieces, uh, light, let's say, pieces on the board, here it also can be, like, white spawns can be just weaknesses. But... That being said, we already had that kind of position. Yeah, we had it with the pawn on g2, right? I mean, doesn't we can match this g3? Yeah, I never quite understand this, you know, when people play into things without, well, it's very hard to change the, you know, the the flow of the match, right? Like you got some something prepared, it's not really working out, but you don't have a lot of time to think about what else you can do, right? You really have to think on the fly. Um, that's why it's nice to have some backup options, obviously, to be like thinking before the match. Well, what, what am I going to do if like if she starts playing the Petrov and uh, it's not working out for me? Right. And I think. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it's easy to say that from the side. Right. When you're actually the one playing the match, by the way, the reason I'm not really talking so much about the game, it's exactly their first game. This is a, a complete, uh, you know, complete repetition of that uh, at this moment. Remember, there's somewhere soon Humpy played Knight G5, and the only yeah. difference is they have more time at this point. Oh, wow. But so the pawn was on G3, right? In that position. Yeah. I think it was just when I joined after my magical disappearing, but that was the yeah. exact same position. Wow. Yeah, so, so that's what I'm saying. So Katarina is really not doing anything different at all, right? Like she's going into the same moves. Okay, now Humpy did something different, so now they're here. Uh, obviously, Humpy's not having any trouble. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I would try more if I was Katarina to, to get some play with the white pieces because, uh, I mean, you know, you don't want to put, like, all of your marbles, like, in the in the three-minute and bullet. I don't know. That's what I would do. I, I just don't like, like, you know, losing my white pieces without even a game. Yeah, it's true. And also, you know... Um... In a way, I um I wanted to point out on that thing that she said, like continuing like same uh, playing same position. You don't have much time to change. You don't like uh, you need to have a backup strategy. Yeah, you have two. Let's say you have you need to have two strategies for the match or even three strategies for different scenarios. But one thing I do want to point out, it all depends actually on your own repertoire. How big is your own opening repertoire? Because yeah. if it's very small, let's say imagine you are someone yeah. like uh, one where Mastin and Belenkai only has Karakan and plays Karakan. And this is not yeah. a big thing. You can change it, you yeah. know? Like, but the, the good news for Katarina yeah. Lagno, her opening repertoire is wide, so she can do it. Like, uh, yeah. you know, first of all, all she's got to do is, like, pick some different line against either the, you know, pick either a different line against the Petrov, uh, play the Bishop's opening, or, you know, the Vienna, or something, right? Like, she can definitely play the Bishop's opening. It's not, like, that much of a stretch, I think, for an E4 player. I mean, yeah. pretty much every E4 player like learns that as like one of their, you know, I think uh, one of their lines. Um, and the other thing that she can do, I mean, she could switch to D4. That's a more radical thing. So I wouldn't really recommend that. I would just try a different line against E4, E5. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the point is there is a lot of change. Uh, there, there is a lot of choice. Yeah, there is no, there is a lot of choice. Yeah, that's the thing. And speaking of choice, did you see how much time Humpy has just spent on the last, uh, uh, on the last move? She now finally plays Rook A to E8. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. So what is that move about? I guess pawn takes, pawn takes, queen takes, takes, takes. Okay. So there, I mean, she was just kind of like willing to lose that pawn to go like rook d5 and make like an easy draw in the rook end game three on two. Um, so Katarina says no, not so fast. <laughs> and uh, plays queen e3. Yeah, I mean, okay, there's chances like where Humpy just loses a pawn and has to play down a pawn. Yeah, I mean, that's kind, kind of, of unpleasant, even though if it's going to be a draw, still unpleasant. 
Yeah, there is this B6 pawn that is attacked. Maybe this move, uh, Dina. Here's you a go D5. Yeah, I think, I think, I think. Wait, no, my move doesn't work. Oops, I was like hoping to Rook go D5? here, but then you just take my queen and I'm down a rook. Ooh, yeah, that's uh, uh, that. That would be unpleasant. A little bit unpleasant. Yeah. So I guess I mean I have to go somewhere else. But where do I go? Queen D5 has just followed mm -hmm. by. Uh, um humpy by humpy humpy is just play queen d5 going out of this pin of, of the x-ray also attacking attacking what c5 okay so let's say b takes c5 a takes c5 rook takes b wait what is c5 c5 takes b6 a7 takes b6 rook takes b6 white is an extra pawn but where is the advantage is there no yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I don't know what, okay, she's thinking because she does have the luxury of thinking, uh, rook mm -hmm. b6, right? Um, okay, queen b6, what? Okay. Also possible. Okay, yeah, but why is she allowing that? Oh, because of queen b8 check, so that's a blunder, okay. So Humpy's not going to blunder her rook. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say it's a little unpleasant, right? And especially with her time situation, I think Logno should be you know, making her suffer a bit. Okay, we've seen Humpy. She's got like the skills to defend even quite difficult positions with little time. This is for not sure. the most challenging for her, but uh, still, you know, down a pawn. It, 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 uh, Katarina should try to make this a long game. Yeah, a pawn is a pawn, you know, especially when playing uh, a blitz game. You can go here, there, you know, torture your opponents uh, in every sense. And uh, then uh, normally, normally it actually works out. Normally it pays off. So I put my money here on Katarina for sure on her way. And even though, let's say, computer assassin is going to be a draw. Yeah, we will see how, how easily Kumpi can defend this position. Right now she's threatening... Uh, she's threatening to take the pawn. So yeah, queen back. Maybe put the queen somewhere around here. This area of the board seems promising. You like queen uh, f4 and queen f5. Aha, uh -huh, I see you. Yeah, well, and in fact, why, I want to get my nice. pawn here. Yeah, get my pawn to h5. I mean, of course, these are all dreams because Humpy will do something to not let that happen. But, you know, you go there. Now rook f3, perhaps. It's kind of interesting looking. Rook d4 is fine. Yeah, Humpy's active enough that it's not so easy for white to even really make this uh too challenging i would just go g6 okay That's h4 fine. let's go you know one thing that is important here to to see apart from let's say um uh, it's enough for humpy one thing which is not enough here is her time look at the 16 seconds versus one minute and 30 seconds for katarina and remember we already saw humpy getting flagged so i mean no getting flagged sorry mm. London your rook with in the time pressure so okay yeah. queen e6. all right so no. she wants the rook end game katarina should not trade rooks just go back the problem is it's very hard to avoid it because black will be playing mm. rook d5 soon and attacking that mm. pawn. So how does she avoid the trade of the queens? Yeah, I think she kind of... Well, I have an idea. Hard. Yeah. What about queen h5? Although you're going to go rook g4. Oh, queen g4, right? Right. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, so I would go rook d5 because if you want to play a four, Dina, if that's your plan, I'm good with that. My go plan ahead. is rook c7. Oh, oh exactly. rook c7. Yeah, because I was like... If you're going to do that move, it really weakens uh, your king. So I would have been okay with that. Um, rook c7. Okay, rook e7. Rook e7 is, is nice one. Nice one. I have to take. And then I can push d h4. But that makes me trade one piece, which I did not want to do from the beginning. Okay, h4. Let's go. It's time. It's about time. h4. Do I have f6, Dina? Or, yeah, I think. f6. This is wild. Ooh, g6. Uh, okay. I don't like that. Um, kind of okay. weakening h4 okay nice now. and solid i think by humpy king will be coming here it's all all right g7 and now h4 come on i want to see h4 yes f6? finally no you have six you don't want to do yet okay h5 is good six is kind of weakening yeah i know the question is what's the plan is there any plan that's the question yeah her queen is standing well on e6 and she just needs to move her rook around and stay latched to this pawn and that's what she's doing. And, you know, she has less time than Katarina, but Katarina is the one who actually needs to win, right? So she needs a winning plan, which is not so easy. 
I mean, once again, Troy's fine. I think Troy's fine for Katarina here because it's only one point difference. And like, all you need to do is to continue not to lose. At this point, I think you, you should avoid losing as a starter. Yeah. And then you will see. You yeah, will I mean, she doesn't score. seem to be trying too hard here, but there's really not that much she can do, right? Yeah, it's um, going to be a draw. And I think now they're the same on the clock. So Katarina just needs to kind of like, uh, you know. Although Katarina they... seems to be playing for a win, no? I don't know. Yeah, it's just F3. F3. Okay. Wow. I mean, okay, that move. And G4 maybe the plan right. is? To push G4? Yeah, it's, very, it's a little risky, but okay. Yes, G4. Wow. Falling I mean, take, who? Queen takes. Okay, she's going to trade. Oh, Rook takes E5. Ooh, okay. Oh, oh. oh, F6, F6 is all right. Yeah. Okay, fine. We're good. Queen end game. Mm. Queen F5 is fine. Queen F5 is good. I mean, everything is good. Oh, E5. E5. Watch oh, out. E4. Draw. Oh, okay. Wow. She offered a draw. Just in time. E5 was okay. Or, oh, sorry, E4. Yeah. I, say, I meant E4, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Okay, Knight of three. Let's go. All right, so Humpy's got... Okay, maybe they have time for one more game. Uh, yeah, they definitely and, have time for one yeah. more game. Humpy's this, still only one point ahead. Yeah, one, one point, point but she keeps the one point. You know, I, I'm following this strategy, like... Every draw is good for Katarina, but also every draw is good for Humpy because she keeps your score on. Yeah, these games are intense as fascination. Yeah, I agree. There, there is an intensity in this match. Like, I feel like the players are just keeping each other very close, right, Dino? Absolutely. This is nothing in comparison to what we've seen, let's say, between Katarina Lagno and Daisy Corey. Was that the match that we covered together? Uh, no, I think Katarina, in her first oh, yeah. match, she played uh, Agrawal. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we covered Daisy versus uh, Harika. Harika. Yeah, Harika. Yes, yeah, yes. that's correct. But yeah, that oh, yeah. match that was, was very big over, That was all over the place. Yeah, that was like a lot of fighting, like a uh, street, street battle kind of And stuff. yes, you haven't seen uh, Ho Yifang versus Curse Eve this morning. That was, oh my God, that was the, the, the bloodiest thing I've ever seen. It's just, it's not about the score, yeah, that how, that um, Ho Yifang won like 20 to 5. It's about the games. The games were so wild, but here wow. it's super tense. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, so tell me a little opposite. bit about that match. I mean, because I guess, you know, they both have a tactical style. So was it, was it a very like, what other match would you compare it to in this women's oh. championship? Anything? I mean, I would compare, it, like, in the in the points, in the number of domination, I would definitely compare it to the one we covered together between Harika and uh, Daisy. Not because we covered it, obviously, but, but because, like, it's such a big domination. Although, when you look at the games, it was every single time that Carissa Yip was the one who was going after Ho you find Like, in every single opening, she was pushing the pawns, like, you know, F4, G4, H4, G5, and every single Sicilian, she would go pushing all the pawns. She would never castle. Both of them would never castle. But it was always, you know, Carissa who was the one, like, dictating what is the the what is the direction of the game. And yet, at the same time, you know, you just said that Ho you find is also like super uh, sharp and tactical but in fact in fact it was it was actually who you find who was the 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 solid one you know the solid one in the she match was a positional the, player wow so exactly. was just, uh, she was initiating the wild play yeah and you know um how you find would go to calls but you know trying to to kind of like you know like knight of three g3 b3 like uh, trying to you know come down to uh, to say things like this but but yeah th that was a wild match and uh I bet we have, we already like, are we having something new right now? Or it's, well, we already have this opening line, of course, but definitely Bishop G4 is what uh, I think she played uh, in her last outing with this line with rugby seven, knight C6, right? Dina, this time she changes that up for A5. Okay. I mean, still feels like White's got a nice initiative here for the pawn. Absolutely. Hey, does that sack do anything? Ooh, Bishop H5. Bishop yeah, H5. First, she wants to protect the pawn. First, we need to go like here, protect the pawn. But you know, one day, one, one day, day that baby. idea is not out of the question. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. Um, okay, so um one day is not now, right? Because you can oh, there is no threat after bishop takes h5. 
Yeah, I like, can just take on wanna, D4. Yeah, I wouldn't want to give up that center pawn. I mean, makes interesting sense. Interesting choice. I mean, this is actually a really interesting choice. Like, why did she choose that instead of that? Right? I guess like she, you know, last game there was a whole run of this pawn to a1 right maybe she's choosing to put the bishop there just to keep a little bit of a better eye on that pawn correct i think that's what makes sense yeah b5 i love that move you know making use of your two connected past pawns and uh, watch out be careful for those pawns they can be really dangerous yeah they're coming down pretty quickly although i guess on b4 you still technically have bishop takes b4 yeah, I Not see people kind of, are asking what was yeah. wrong with rook takes a5. I think that's a good question, but simply the explanation would be that the d4 pawn would fall, and I think white just doesn't want to trade yeah. central pawn to a pawn of the side. Yeah, I mean, actually, white would just be down a pawn here, losing their whole strength, which is the d pawn, um, and yeah, losing their initiative. So white is down a pawn here, guys. Let's not forget that. And why are they down a pawn? in order to have that powerful center. So white really doesn't want to lose the D4. Pawn. Yeah, the center. No, 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 that's not an option. I kind of admire here black because I looked on A5 and B5 and honestly, it scares me. But I see that the evil bar is super confident here saying that the position is completely equal. That's interesting to me. I guess it's just white center is so strong that the, that black cannot really advance the, the pawns also like what do you want to advance before there is bishop takes before and a4 i think it's just blocked gets blocked on the on the dark squares like queen d2 and bishop b4 yeah bishop so bishop b7. b7 okay so humby is definitely kind of committed to an active strategy here um i yeah you can't really sag here yet because at the end of all of that black will bring out their queen to stop the checkmate I mean, this is the move that she's trying to do, right? But issue for Humpy is like she has spent a lot of time to get here. Her position is interesting, but it requires like very energetic and concrete play because if she doesn't play like that and she just kind of lets, you know, let's say the bishop come here, um, you know, eventually, yeah, eventually for the knight to develop. I mean, of course, she's just going to be losing, right? And this move is definitely something Black is interested in doing, totally blocking that bishop on c3. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one more thing. Ooh, e6. Wow, what a decision. How about oh, my boy. And bishop h5? Is that possible? It might not be. <laughs> you really want be. to go yeah. for it. But queen b1, same idea. Double attack. g6 and b5. But yeah, I think five double going, defense. going the wrong way for oh. Humpy. She's like, she's she's over committed she's now down two pawns and Ooh. Um, <gasps> rook takes g5 what rook takes g5 what was that oh, and, the, and queen c6 before. now attack. there's bishop b4 there's bishop b4 dina no wait 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 rook yeah. takes g5 first and then queen c6 that's what i'm saying exactly to stop yeah before, right because she she blundered that right so she could have oh. taken first and then just won the game with that double attack wow. she starts with that allowing humpy to actually not just not just defend but actually have like a good position wow. yeah and katarina just played way too fast she didn't think at all she almost yeah. like pre-moved queen c6 yeah bad that idea when you got 30 when you got three minutes and your opponent's got like 30 seconds you definitely have the time to find the win so i'd feel like that was just kind of a bad practical uh kind of decision move. yeah 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 I, I kind of noticed you know from the previous match and this match as well that katarina actually plays super super fast in a way sometimes even too fast and that's her style like just just once you know to put the pressure and dominate uh, and you know like um let's say learn no not learn but in, uh, make a profit of the mistakes of the opponent in time trouble maybe that is just her her style of playing blitz in general at least in this yeah, matches. I mean, that's how, of course, that's how you win games in Blitz, put your opponent um, in, in time trouble. The problem is Humpy still has some time, and she's going to be feeling really positive about her position here. Um, you know, this is like the problem is this night's not developed. This is hanging. This is, you know, well, one day an idea. Rook C1 to C8 is just a winning idea. Um, and this night is amazing, right? So she kind of like, she... She 
has put her opponent in a position where Humphy still has time to win this game. So it was very, uh, very unnecessary, you know? Definitely, I mean, definitely actually, unnecessary. Dina, actually, Dina, the point of um, having a huge time advantage like Logno is to use it at the key moment to win the game, right? That's, that is why you want that time advantage. It's not just to like flag your opponent or something. Hope they make some mistakes as they get lower on time. It's also to be able to think of those critical moments. And, you know, that was certainly a critical moment. And she, you know, she blundered something quite basic, right? She attacked checkmate, allowing her opponent to just block it, you know, kind of one move, one mover, right? And, and that was kind of, it's, uh, but we'll see. I mean, Humpy, I think, you know, she knows that this is her chance. I mean, that she was losing and now she's not. And um, maybe she will uh, be able to capitalize on it. It's going to be a good show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we want that show to happen. We really want that show to happen. Right now, I see 27 seconds for Humpy. And Katrina is thinking, taking her time and perhaps realizing that the position. Oh, my gosh. That's a pretty desperate move, I think. Oh, I mean... my gosh. Oh, my lands. Rook oh, takes yeah. B7. Don't, the queen I don't takes think B7. So. I don't know which one she should take, but it doesn't look good. Yeah, Knight she's gonna get the bishop. Maybe then take oh, that. Oh my line. lands. Yeah, this is looking really bad for Katarina, and she is, I think she's gonna be paying for that mistake. Queen C8. Good try, good try. Yes. Okay. okay, this wasn't actually that. Okay, rook a5 is at the end. Oh, that's why it's winning. Okay, there is absolutely no compensation here. I mean, yeah. okay, there is one compensation. If we manage to trade d4 to b5. Yeah. We are not. Yeah, pretty smart move by Humpy. She kind of used a good chunk of time on that decision. Is oh, Rook C5 just winning? Rook C5 B3. just winning in the spot. Okay, it's winning, right? Because b3, Rook yeah. C6, and that's it. Yeah, that's a resignation for Katarina. Oh, no. And that's going to be a two points. Two points difference, two points lead by, by Humpy. And that was the, the final game. That was the our last game of the uh of the of the first portion of five plus uh yeah. one. Should we show how uh how wait, Katarina wait, wait. could have won here? And uh, right. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah, let, let's let's show it. Let's show it. So right here, right. Um, she went in for this checkmate threat and the threat on the bishop, but unfortunately right. for her, White had a simple defense, just blocking the checkmate. And then if she, when she takes the bishop, which was the whole point, she loses a really important bishop. And then her position just kind of remains like a wreck. Like the rook is hanging, the knight's undeveloped, tons of weaknesses in the pawn structure. And Humpy, you know, took this game quite nicely. Now, what could have happened is that she could have removed the powerful knight from g5, very forcing move, followed up with the same double attack. And now the difference is she will be winning the bishop on c3. There's no bishop e4. Um, so like, let's say you go something like f3. And then when I take the bishop, like even worse, like this pawn is hanging too. Yes, that was the very easy and the very nice tactics. I say easy, obviously easy from the commentator spot, but also like for Katarina, normally it's easy, but I guess it was just, you know, in a way, a bad luck that she kind of, you know, didn't feel, didn't feel the, um, that that was the moment to think. And had she thought she would easily find out. Yeah. Had she taken a thought. Thinking is pretty important. Yeah, Chelsea, that's yeah. the reason why you just showed that that cup with, with nine, yeah, because of the thinking. Yeah, no, I showed it because Baron Von Chicken Pants requested for me to show my trophy. So I was like, all right, I will do that. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It is the nine queens uh, sculpture, guys. I got it like as kind of a gift for one of the events I did from a company and organization called Nine Queens that uh, you know promotes chess. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's actually probably my coolest trophy. Uh, Dina. Wow, that's amazing. You know what my coolest trophy is? Uh, it's the, uh, as you can see here, wait, 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 you can see. Yeah, the chess board, see I see it. No, 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 it's not the chess board. It's, no. it's uh, Daniel Narazitsky over there on my punching ball. But jokes oh, wow. aside, 
It has been a portion number one, three plus one. Humpy Corno is leading with five with five points versus three points to Katarina Lagno. A very tough and a very close match. We're about to start the second portion, which is going to be three plus one. But before that, we shall take a very short break because you know it's uh it's uh it's very it's very hot here. We need to hydrate ourselves. So uh, do not go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Hey guys, very shortly, the 44th Chess Olympiad is going to be beginning in Chennai, India. Uh, the first round is on July 29th, and you can follow all the action on chess.com at go.chess.com slash Olympiad 22. And both Dina and I will be there. Uh, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be an exciting tournament, guys. The Olympiad coming back after four years of break. Wow, four years, that's incredible. A very big break indeed. And welcome back, everybody. We are in the middle of uh, Katerina Lagno versus Hampi Konarub matchup. We're in this second portion, three plus one. Um, me going for Master Dina Belenka, Grandmaster in a crush. Uh, nothing new there. We see yet another patrol. We were about to to have a look at the um, at the predictions by Smart Chess. In fact, before the match, we had sixty five percent for Katarina's win versus thirty five percent for Humpy's loss. But right now, guess what? The odds changed. Live odds are now forty five percent for for actually for Katarina to lose versus fifty five for win of Humpy. Um, Irina, your own expectation, your own impression of this match. Uh, do you agree with live odds? Well, I think that Humpy has certainly been uh, dominating the five-minute portion of the match. Um, I don't think that the gap between them is so big that Katarina can't overcome it. And we do know that Humpy is not the faster player, right? So um, do I think that, you know, suddenly Humpy has like, uh, a bit of an uh, edge in the match. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I would say like it's, you know, 55 in her favor. Yes, I would agree with that with a two point advantage. But um, I mean, let's, let me put it this way, Adina. <laughs> let me, I got a way to explain this. There's nothing I've seen in this match so far that would make me think that like Katarina is going to win. But, uh, but, but knowing the general, you know, uh, strength, you know, strengths of the players and Katarina's, you know, um, you know, ability to play faster, right? I do think that that, you know, makes that, you know, it makes it quite possible for her to still come back, right? But so far, yeah, so far it's been like Humpy's match. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, it's been Humpy's match. And we can see that five to three. And uh, normally, let's say uh, we... We also saw that Katarina has been struggling. That's the most important issue. And she has been lucky somewhere. Remember that game with... Uh, what uh getting a point because of uh, like uh a mouse slip also it, it would have been a draw but it could have been even a loss yeah so and some other games where katarina managed to make a draw i mean it, it's been tough and speaking of right now we have the game on the board this is the first game of uh as they say um three plus one as they say well it is what it is um knight on three was attacked now knight going to h4 do we see a slight change uh, in the opening uh, compared to what we are already used to, Irina? Yeah, so Katarina stuck with the same line, but she definitely has an improvement here. She came up with the move C5, which I guess the computer quite liked. And um, of course, the pawn still cannot be captured because of bishop H2. So she goes G3, black goes B6, bishop A3. Uh, interesting move, you know, if if you take, take, I mean, okay, the hope is that you're going to get the rook into e7. So Humpy closed up that part of the board. Seems like a good decision. But then Katarina just moves the bishop back. And it's interesting that the, you know, the computer is giving this position as an edge for white. And yeah, it really is because of this move. I mean, just a very time-based thing. If black would have had time to get the knight out, connect the rooks, then they can always meet a4 with a6. But the problem is the white goes a4 before black has a knight out. So if you go there and I take you, you can't take back with the a pawn. You got to take with the c pawn. And actually, then you're hanging that pawn. So this is a very powerful move, right? That side pawn move sometimes can be just decisive. Correct. And, and bishop sees on oh, idea. Yeah, white just captures a pawn there, Dina. Uh-huh. What do you think about this position? I really am surprised by the evaluation bar. What the heck is going here? But uh, I was just about to say it seemed fine, but it's not. It's not. Uh, uh, there is queen g4 mm -hmm. idea. Queen g4 attacking the knight. 
and bishop to g5. Oh my gosh, it's knight and queen attacking at the same time. Ooh, that looks painful. That looks very painful. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so... Um, Hold on a second. Yeah. Was there, like, is there... Was there Remind me, was there a blunder of one move or just the natural flow of the game? Oh, I think this is the natural flow of the game. I think that she just didn't really have... Oh, wow. And she's actually about to lose on time too, right? <gasps> oh, um, la, la. Right. So so this is a, a good start to the three-minute portion from Katarina because she's oh, yeah. in the opening. Humpy's going to have to... We're going to see how Humpy adjusts to that because she clearly just kind of followed what she was doing and it's not going to work anymore it is absolutely a great start for for katarina especially considering that the first game of three or five plus one katarina lost so now it's an important moment to come back yeah she has a ton of time she's got a completely winning position i mean she just has actually two extra pawns including a protected pass pawn on b6 so this game is over like there is no coming back for humpy in this one yeah um but yeah, the interesting thing is how Humpy will adjust to this, you know, problem in her black opening that has worked Ooh. for her so well so far. Yeah, so apparently Katrina has finally found a way how to how to, you know, punch, how to uh, how to find found that uh, that uh, hole in in the line or she managed to trick for some reason. In the yeah, opening. I mean, I mean someone obviously told her uh, you know, that C5 <gasps> was the move to do. You're um, right. It's just as you expected, in fact. It's just as you said it. You said it. After the break, you will see they're going to improve on their openings. Yes. I mean, that's the thing that makes sense, right? It's very helpful to have someone like watching who can just tell you this is where you improve. And um, and yeah, Katarina, Katarina definitely um, is going to knock Humpy out of her comfort zone in that black opening. Oh yeah, absolutely. Although, you know, if it's just one move, maybe for, for Humpy, she needs to, you know, to make just a small change before. Yeah. Maybe she so, needs to make a small change before and that's it. The problem is it was kind of a forcing line, right? It's a, a forcing Correct. line, so she needs to know where to switch it, right? It's not, not that easy. We will see. I mean, right now, Katarina, again, going to show us an improvement in the Grunfeld. There you go. You see, <laughs> I mean, of course, you know, because nothing worked for Katarina in the five minute portion. Like it was very clear that Humpy was the better prepared player. Yeah. But, you know, all she's got to do for the second part is like, get some advice. Like this is how you start playing. And yeah, you can totally, you know, turn that disadvantage into an advantage even. Wow. 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 I am truly uh, impressed by the professionalism here from Katarina and her team. Yeah um and okay c5 interesting not knight c5 so katarina has sacrificed a pawn in this line uh she definitely has some initiative although i'm not sure exactly what it's kind of based on right now humpy's just castling okay so i guess it's based on this undeveloped bishop on c1 yeah the bishop is not really nice here i mean pretty passive and you know, once again i already said it before bishops can't play from their own diagonal but this diagonal is right now closed so there is absolutely absolutely nothing here for the bishop to play with i mean does protect the rook on b2 but other than that also i kind of like bishop on g4 you know making a use like pointing out that h4 move might have been a little bit too early or weakening yeah, no, it's funny how it really helps to get some good advice, you know, to just like, you can still play the same openings, but just a different move and you take the game in a different direction. And now it's really Humpy who is under pressure in both of those things that has that have worked for her so well in the five minute, because I mean, if Katarina wins this one, match is going to be even. And then you actually clearly see that the, the, the tide is, will be uh, going for her. Yeah, absolutely. And um one more thing I would say is that um, the D2 pawn, you were not used to it, yeah, to, to staying on D2, but all the previous games that we have seen, the D2 pawn would at some point push the D4 and get back to, you know, to the classical Grunfeld. And here, it seems like uh, White is not on time to push it to D4 for now. Yeah, I mean, rook B6 is an interesting move. Um, she's trying to just double up the rooks. Yeah, the problem for White... 
is that you know, D4, yeah, D4 is tricky to get in because, I mean, first of all, they can take you, take you, take you on F3 and then just get your pawn with like their bishop being quite good on D4. So yeah, as you said, just you simply do not have time. And with rook b6, black shows clearly that they, on the other hand, have all the time, you know, to improve their pieces, to bring the second rook to b6. Now a takes b6, by the way, is an idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there we go. And putting the rook on e8. Although, you know, I'm praising so much black here, but looking at the... Uh, at the evil bar, it seems not that convincing to the computer after all yeah. that. I mean, I wonder if I was white and I didn't like my position, I didn't like my time, I would just play D4 and make them make a draw. Ooh. I mean, I think it kind of makes sense. She's down a lot on the clock. Her position's not clear. Would I play this to win? Or, I mean, first of all, play to win, you know, it's like how, <laughs> you know? But I think, I think I would just go for this move and be like, okay, you want to take, take, give me your bishop, like, um, you know, that's okay, but okay. So she's uh, she's more ambitious, more ambitious than me. Uh, all right. I, what's the idea of that? Does she want to go bishop b five? Does she want to go? I don't know. Rook a eight is sort of an obvious move, right? Yeah, but I mean, it still seems like objectively there is nothing bad about White's, White's position. You look at the bishop on g seven; it's so bad and so passive. Ninety five. That's interesting. Uh, how Maybe about work? Or knight, knight take c5. Rook d1. Wait, knight take c5 and rook e1. Is that an option? Ah, okay. So she's going for that. Wait, uh, rook e1 and then bishop a6 and then what? Maybe knight c6. Ah, double attack. Really annoying. Ooh, knight c6 first. Uh, say, oh Possible my gosh. Too. Yeah. Yeah, that's Even nice. One would check. Take and now, ball. oh, just 97, Rook Jack. Yeah. And we want a pawn. And that's a pawn. That's a free pawn. Right now, nice. two extra pawns. Oh, it's two extra pawns. Nice. Yeah, even better than one. Um, not many people <laughs> even are nicer more than, than Irina. Two pawns are nicer uh -huh. than one. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, also knight coming to d5, that's going to be amazing. Ooh, bishop d3. Bishop d3 is a little bit painful, but you can just, you just move the queen away. Like, queen b3, like, queen b2. Yeah, you're, oh, queen a2 is also an option. Wait, did I say queen yeah. b2? I don't like that. Oh, I just played it. I mean, okay. If they just take played. there, you take there, right? So I don't know why exactly she chose that square, I'll be honest. I mean, maybe she didn't like queen a2 because of bishop c4. Correct. Um, it's still a question of like how you're getting that bishop into the game because it's it's buried. Mm, maybe you want to go and challenge that bishop. I mean, yeah, black is still like again, they're not like completely losing here. Two pawns is a lot, but this undeveloped bishop is also a factor. I agree. Yeah, the bishop on c1 is is like you kind of like so one day you will come after him and then you will regret not having been developed. Yeah, Humpy is like, you know, going to try to attack this pawn, I guess. Yeah. So the thing is that, like, Katarina is actually getting lower on time than her. Now it's, uh, we're in for, for something exciting here. Ooh, we've got this queen a4, queen b6, c4. And now, okay, the bishop is super ugly. But other than that, everything is so good. And two pawns, two pawns, baby. You can feel them. Yeah, when is she going to... Like, the problem is when she moves the bishop, that queen comes in, right? So it's a bit tricky. Yeah. It's a very, Great. very tricky position. Super tricky. And you see, it's hard to handle it well without little time. I mean, Katarina, oh. bishop g3. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. It, bad bishop. Uh-oh. Rook. Oh, no. Things are oh, getting no. Rough. And queen, queen a1. a1. Queen a1. Yeah. Queen a1. She is just losing that bishop, isn't she? Yes, it's a rook down. It's a total rook down. Oh she no! She does have a lot of pawns. She does have a lot of pawns, but now ninety-five. We gotta hold. We have to hold. King, king. C two rook. Okay, rook b eight was also pawns are falling apart. And the problem is, you don't have anything to attack here for for white. You don't have anything. Anything to attack from the black side? No, all the pawns are falling apart. <gasps> oh, queen h6 mate! Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Oh uh, my lands! Wow! Wow! Queen h6 
mate. Oh that my. is crazy. Okay, I gotta catch Katarina's face on that. That, that was painful. Yeah, that was beautiful. that was pretty insane. Oh my gosh. Oh, my oh gosh. wow. She yeah. <laughs> and Humpy's like shaking her head, like what what like you know, like like she's not happy, but you know, she yeah, she should be very happy about that. Wow. Wow. And yeah, Katarina had a little <laughs> moment of shock there. All right. Well, I guess they're even. They're definitely even without blunder. You know, Humpy gave her a point yeah. with Brooke, and now Katarina gave her a checkmate and won. Um, but you know, but like despite that gift by Katarina, I mean, definitely, uh, definitely, you know, Kat, she's looking better in this three minutes. So I still think everything is uh, going fine for her. Let's see. Humpy is trying to improve a little bit. There you go. You see Humpy She's not going into that line anymore. It worked for as long as it did. And now she goes for Bishop E7 instead of Bishop D6. And that is correct. That is a good idea for her to make that change. Yeah, this is another popular line, actually. Yeah, and we haven't seen that before, have we? Yeah, Humpy had the expression pretty... like she lost. Yeah, I agree. She looks unhappy about that game. She but... looks, she's focused. She's focused. She's definitely focused. But remind me, Irina, this is a new structure for our match, right? Yep. Well, yeah, we haven't seen Humpy play that Bishop E7 line against the Petrov, so we haven't seen anything like this before. Uh, White has double pawns. White also has an extra pawn that Black would like to get back. But if they take it, then they have to deal with that. And she still takes it. All right, so Queen B7. So now what? You can't take there because your bishop hangs. So maybe just Bishop F6. Bishop F6 seems pretty nice to me. Although, careful for Bishop D4. Bishop D4. Hmm. And, oh yeah, Bishop D6 makes more sense because of like, yeah, you're creating yeah. weaknesses. I mean, I mean, weaknesses, you don't have light squared bishop either. Bishop a7 is coming, right? Oh, wow, it's not coming. Okay. So Katarina doing something different. Um, wow, really? Like, well, what's that? What's the big edge there? If I go queen a5 or something like that, what's the problem? I actually don't really see the problem so much for black. I guess you will be a little faster to get your rooks to the open Yeah, pile. the rooks are more active, taking the open piles faster. Rook b1, not oh, we, Yeah, no, rook b1 is fine. Rook B1. Also, yes, it's a symmetrical position, and uh, it's just about who gets first the files, the the squares, the the land gets first the land. Hmm. That's what I would say. Also, Rook D1 is about to come. Uh, Rook D1, Rook D3, Rook D7. Ooh, I mean, I'm dreaming because Rook D1 there is going to be Rook D8, but Queen B7. Watch out. Who's going to be first? Yeah, so the question is, can I go rook d8 here? Can I just start fighting for the open file? Yeah, rook d8, rook queen b7. That's what I would, that's what I would say. Hmm. Rook d8, queen b7. Let's go. Queen b7 kind of threatens that pawn. Yeah, what if, and if I take, if I take on a2, kind of bravely or foolishly, queen b7 probably, right? Rook d8, queen, oh, queen c4, also nice, you know, also keeping the edge, improving little by little. I really love this position for white here, very instructive from, from Katarina. Yeah, what I really don't love is Humpy's time. Th 30 Ooh. seconds against two and a half minutes is not a great situation to be in, in a position where they're still, you know, you're actually still under pressure, right? So, yeah, I mean... Humpy needs to get that time situation under control because uh, she's going to be giving too many chances to Katarina like this. Yeah, rook d8, rook d8, and rook b7. That's exactly the letter I wanted to call, and here it is on the board. But here, the question is, what is going to happen after rook d1, king g2, and queen d5? And I guess that's the way exactly we have it. So black gives away the pawn to, to get some activity back. But the biggest question here, is that activity enough to actually equalize in this endgame? I don't think so. Yeah, it's probably not going to be completely equal. So after rook a7, ah, oh, she plays bishop a7 for that Ooh. reason. Oh. Is that a blunder? Of a yeah, because pawn? now she might not be, yeah, she's not saving that pawn, is she? Yeah, that was a blunder, Dina. She needed to play rook oh, a7. No. So the reason, the reason she didn't play rook a7 is because of d4. Well, first of all, there is some funny move like rook d7 that we actually could check out here. 
And secondly, yeah. I mean, you can even still like, I mean, still like this end game, I mean, it's still playable for white to try to win. So um, she definitely messed up with that bishop a7 move. And yeah, now it's heading towards a draw. Mm. Not sure why black declined to trade. I don't really, oh, because she didn't want this to be like a check. check. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know what? Um, maybe once again, we see another case when look at the time of Katarina so much ahead compared to her opponent. So maybe that was once again, that moment when Katarina played too fast instead of, yeah. and didn't, you know, did not feel the, the critical moments and did not use the time that she had in order to calculate and compare. That's true. You know, and right now black is latching onto these pawns. Basically if white protects one, we go attack the other, and then you could just go back and forth between these two pawns. So it does look like she's making a draw here without too much trouble. And if white gives up the C2 pawn, white actually also has to watch out for bishop D4 as an idea. So maybe white will just be taking the repetition here. Yeah, That's absolutely. What it looks like, actually. Yeah, it could be a very wise choice, indeed. It could be a very wise choice. Yeah, so Humby escapes. Yeah, pretty bad position. Again, well... The openings have definitely turned in Katarina's favor, so, and the clock is heavily in her favor, so I think she's got pretty good chances in this match, but Humpy got obviously some luck in that last game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little bit of, you know, I would say a little bit of good fortune, not, not luck, but good fortune in this game. It seems like there is a fortune around. Uh, I mean, no, you say it's, it's, um, it's balanced, right? Yeah, Katarina still, okay, she is down to 24 seconds. Pawns are getting traded. So there's no real threats that White has here. So I guess just go back with the Rook. In fact, there is a plan here, and I was about to call it. That's exactly it, to activate White's king. Using the time, the Black king is still super passive. So imagine if White manages to bring the king to e4, then the game may actually be pretty much winning. So we only need to find a way to sequence of the moves, how we can trade yeah exactly to force rook c4 rook c4 no 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 rook c4 rook d6 and king e4 that's the way come on you can do it yeah she'll it find now. it i mean she can should play be seven. seven here but the thing is there's rook c6 if she does that yeah rook c6 what is the rook c6 about rook c5 if, if there was like ever a white rook coming to, to the d file then black has rook c6. yeah but my point is to play rook oh yeah my rook c4 exactly and now okay. bishop b2 let's go bishop b2, b2 and now what and yeah, king e4 has to go king e2 is better yeah she goes after this ah uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah so the black black rook is now a little bit too too active. I see what you mean. Black mm -hmm. Rook is a little bit too active. I mean, still, hard for Humpy. Humpy is super she, low on time. Ooh. Is on time. Two seconds. Oh, careful, careful. Uh oh. Oh, wow. oh two seconds. Yeah, could have even he won, maybe, even... Humpy. Oh, maybe my Humpy gosh. could have won. But it's okay. I mean, like, the thing is, she's just trying to make a draw. She had like two seconds, and that's fine. Yeah. And she was super close to get oh, flagged wow. again. Is by she the trying to, like, again. is she trying to flag Katarina Logno? Who's trying to flag who? Because she declined the trade of rooks, right? Humpy keeps declining. Maybe the trade it was of just a pre-move. Uh, who is who is playing for a win here? Okay, now I it's. Think, I think no one draw. is playing for a win, but yeah, yeah. Just playing. Okay, that's a draw. Yeah, this is free time and circulation. Ooh, but that was spicy. That that d two with the idea bishop c three and move the rook away and and you you promote. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah. So, okay, well, that, I mean, Humpy obviously wasn't really on a track to win that game. Um, now they're in a different line of the Grunfall. There you go. So Humpy immediately making a change. Ooh. Well, two points advantage. So she started off the three minute with a two point advantage and she is still there, but it's been definitely not a very uh, comfortable uh, set of games for her. Indeed. And Seems like Humpy also has like a second plan, as you said, yeah, and third yeah. plan. Like I play this line, Gurfield, it works. I continue playing it. Once I see that it doesn't work anymore, then I switch the line. The yeah. other one, well, Humpy, one yeah, I totally understand her strategy because yeah, the moment she saw that Katarina had some preparation, uh, she immediately switched her line. I'll tell you even one more thing. 
maybe she just kind of wanted to see what Katarina was going to come up with. So she like, it, it would not have been, it would not have been um, unclever of her to just make the change herself before even giving Katarina a chance. Because, you know, it was quite clear that something like that was going to happen. So you could just basically avoid even giving your opponent that one uh, decent game, right? Just immediately make the switch and assume that they've got that uh, improvement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, sometimes it's all about all that, you know, one small decent change that changes completely the whole flow of the match. But I mean, I like the idea of where she went for here, like with this line with the queen trade. Why do I like it? Just because I feel like these positions suit her style. She needs to have something a little bit simpler that she can play fast. Um, you, you can see in this game, her time management is already a lot better. And the position itself, I think, in the, the style of it, the nature of it, suits uh, Humpy, more, you know, more positional. Um, and, you know, she's already got a nice base advantage on the queen side. The king is really well placed on C2. So I think uh, Humpy can be satisfied here. Yeah, definitely. And uh, once again, Happy is the one who is leading. She has six and a half, since six and a half points to four and a half. And that's, uh, that's um, you know, at first when you start the match, you think like, okay, well, one point, two points, it's not a big deal. When this thing becomes consistent, you know, it's kind of in a way puts more and more pressure on Katarina and makes her more nervous and makes her play worse chess than she is capable of. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like Humpy just like keeping that two point advantage is really important as they are playing this three minute portion. Um, you know, we did notice uh, in Humpy's match against Zegnidze when she won by coming from behind is that she has a lot of resilience, right? A lot of mental fortitude. And she had a really uh, sad game where instead of doing a checkmate in one, she wound up mouse slipping her rook, right? And oh, even yeah. after that, you know, she kind of kept her composure, didn't really let it uh, change uh, the dynamic of the match. So I think, you know, like this is a very interesting test for her because, yes, Katarina is for sure putting her under more pressure in this three minute portion, but she's still like somehow staying close, right? Which is a very good sign for Humpy. Yes, 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 yes. That's, uh, that's exactly the point. And, um, you know, Katerina staying close, not so, you know, n n there was never any moment in this match that Katerina would have either even score, I mean, not even the highest score, even even score, yeah? So it shows you the, the which side the ball is on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting, interesting position to see how can white increase their advantage. I mean, what does this move really do? It's hard to understand, Dina, because it's like it's not like you're going to be pushing that pawn. So this move right. definitely leaves me a little bit surprised. But the question is, how does white improve, right? And there, Humpy is like using up some time uh, playing on the queen side. There's going to be b5. She definitely doesn't want to trade the knights. Like there's not going to be any knight trade here. So it's a little tricky for Humpy, right? Like this is maybe Katarina just wanted to make some moves to like uh, drain Humpy's clock a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, Katarina now she plays so fast all the time. Yeah. And sometimes she just makes moves, you know, to make move and yeah, okay, to make I'll her be honest thing. with you. Her, no, her move actually had a point, Dina, because yeah, she's showing it to us with this knight of fate. She wanted the rooks connected to go for this maneuver. So it, it actually there was an makes idea. Makes total there. sense, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like this idea. Now knight is on a six, attacking the bishop, also in a way protecting some things better. Uh, answering your qu previous question, what should white do? I would say whenever you're not ready, you don't know what to do on the king side, you can continue playing on the queen side. I mean, no, wait, the queen side, then the king side. I would say something like g4, but but not now, obviously, because the rooks are getting exchanged. And I say the change of rooks should be in black's favor normally, yeah. but computer says that white is still better and like... It's not as if there was a big change for for White's advantage here for the computer. My, I'm curious why. Maybe it just needs time, you know, to 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 move on. Yeah, Both White needs there. to make sure they don't lose a pawn here. Um, wait, I, I mean, I'm a little okay. 93, she's got to come. Yeah, computer needed time. No, now it's all balanced. Now we see the sequel. Yeah, well, I mean, 
knives the and rook game. trades. Oh, I'm sorry, Danae. Yeah, definitely the rook trades were in Black's favor. And I think Humpy made a mistake by doubling up the rooks there. But admittedly, it was actually pretty hard for her to see where to continue improving her position. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. You know, also one more thing I'd say, um, it's a night end game, yeah? And watch out. With like 20, 30 seconds on the clock, one second increments, um, you know, night jumps here and there can be very, very tricky. Even if let's say end game is completely equal, but it's playable, yeah? One can play, continue, and a lot of things to calculate and you don't have time to calculate. Sometimes you just play with your hands as we see. And uh, who knows? Who knows what it's gonna be? In this game, I wouldn't be surprised if it was like complete roller coaster. Yeah, this looks like it will be a roller coaster. I mean, night end games are really quite sharp. Black has all these ideas of knight here taking the pawn. I mean, knight g2 is quite passive. We try not to do that, but I guess a6, yeah, annoying. I would not really like to be white here, to be honest, but okay, maybe, you know, she's gonna go after the knight, maybe f5. Mm. I feel like anything can happen here. And yeah. it's not easy to be white. I mean, Humpy has her, has a challenge. 93, maybe. F5, you know, get counterplay. F5, you know, just go for F5. There you go. Knight H4? What? Knight H4? Wow, you're getting, yeah, you're getting two <gasps> pawns here. Yeah, that's. Very Who's playing for a win here? Oh, oh no, black no. is black is oh, Humpy balls. just blundered that. Oh no! Wait, was Humpy playing for a win in this game? Humpy just blundered. No, Humpy. Well, she was playing for something, but yeah, she was uh, playing for a play. But now, yeah, now she just blundered that pawn. Oops. Wait, what? <gasps> the expression this on her so face. So smart. Oh, oh my, this is so smart. Yes, Did you see I, I not taking expressions? <laughs> Not taking the E4 pawn, but instead using the time to push the other pawn. <gasps> this is so smart. All right. Wow. So Katarina Logno wins the game. Um, yeah, okay. Look at that. That's a big turnaround. I mean, she wasn't doing that well out of the opening. She was pretty cramped, and we thought that it was more like Humpy's position. But you know, when it got down to this random scramble in the end game, uh, Katarina came out on top. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like, it's so interesting because, like, I could so easily predict that that end game, I don't know who would win it, but it would, it would be, like, a, a resultative game, even though it's completely equal. Just because, you know, of all this, like, as you say, of knights, knight jumps here, there, too hard to complicate, to calculate. All right, we got another game. And, by the way, it's a very rare case, I see. Is it rare or not? But, I mean, Katarina is only one point down for now in the match. And we've got yet something very similar to what we saw already, but once again, a new and different approach. Hmm, different line of the Petrov. So what is going on here? Again, Bishop E7. Uh, what is the difference? Did she not take, did she take with a queen in the previous example? Or with a knight, now she takes uh, with a bone. Okay, this is, yeah, this is definitely a little different from what they This had is new. Before. This is for sure new. I love the structure for white. I mean, it's it's like a French, obviously not uh, not big, not, not any advantage at all for white, but I like the space, you know? It gives me more uh, more freedom to, um, as you say, to, to create. That's yeah. how I would put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Um... Okay, but you know, it's pretty solid. It's pretty solid for Humpy because the thing is, despite White's space advantage, a lot of um, a lot of pieces have been traded off, right? So White's okay, but there you go. Katarina makes an aggressive move. Yeah, F F four. I like that. F four, very aggressive move. Um, okay, uh, C takes D four. Now we're gonna see something like uh, Bishop takes E seven. Okay, bishop takes a seven, queen e seven, c takes d4. Now, the point of this position is that uh, even though white seem to have a lot of space, in fact, it's kind of lacking um, lacking time to defend the weaknesses because there is the d 
4 pawn, which is a weakness. There is a beautiful rook on c4, which is an outpost. There is also an a4 pawn, which is another weakness. Also, watch out for o. Oh, a5, exactly, exactly my point. White can feel that a4 is a weakness, so white plays a5 in order to get rid, you know, of, of this weakness. And uh, that being said, now uh, the question is what will black do? Is it b takes a5, but then a7, another weakness, and most importantly, activating the rook on a1 and attacking the d5. So that is, uh, that is tricky, yeah. I really like the rook on c4, but in a way, I also like the A5 move. Yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like White's got something dangerous here, but for the for now, the problem is that D4 is hanging, right? So can't Black just take that pawn? Taking the pawn, and there you go. You called it. You called for it. Yeah, because there's no, there's no like, okay, there's no back rank tactics with that move, obviously, it completely fails. Um, and obviously now you can't go F5, you hang the other pawn. So it does look like, you know, Humpy has managed to neutralize uh, Logno's initiative right here. It just seems like things are going to get traded down. By the way, Dina, uh, people are asking, so like, what will you be doing at the Olympia? You're playing for the, um, you're playing for the Israeli team, right? I think. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. It's going to be my first Olympia. I'm so excited about it. And uh, um, I just played a tournament in Paris as a warming up. I played a nine round uh, open tournament and mm -hmm. I, I, I did some nice performance. I gained 40 rating points. I'm getting, you know, back to where I belong. So I, uh, I I can't say more. It's so exciting. I I I don't what what this is like. I actually travel next Tuesday. I assume you too. Uh, yeah, I'm going on later Monday evening. Oh, nice. Yeah, because you have a longer road. Ooh. Yes. How nice. is it now, how is it now in Paris? Uh, do you know? It's 41 degrees. My camera has been completely off on and off and now off that's why i'm using the webcam as you can see the quality is not the same also like my power broke previously because of the heat other than that i'm enjoying chess life in paris is good and uh how is life in new york i mean how is life, well, how is life? But, but we, got the, we got the rook on a6 now yeah i mean it's actually like the weather i think is not so bad because i'm sitting here without my fan and i'm not even like sweating much you know so Ooh. um so i guess it's, it's a little more pleasant than in paris Yes, definitely. And speaking of uh, sweating, what do we see here with this a7 pawn and d5 pawn? Is it like black is an extra pawn, but the activity is not enough to push them? Yeah, so somehow what after rook takes d4, so she decided she doesn't want to take this pawn. She wants to keep the game going. Okay, interesting roll of the dice by Katarina. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, she's, you know, she's going for this sort of like active play. Ooh, nice tactics. Yeah. Rook yeah, a7, okay, and we take. get it. Oh Wait. no, my oh, queen. Queen, okay, queen black. Oh, we, queen. we both thought it was a mate in one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Admit okay. it. Admit D5, it. five good move, good move. Okay. Yeah, okay. Humpy's still gonna make a draw here. She's uh not really facing any problems. Nice. G5, I love that. Rook a5 attacking the pawn, and now G takes a four, rook takes d5 king e7 okay okay um no there is nothing here i mean i i, I tried uh back no, back here. there she doesn't want to even allow this kind of stuff you know she doesn't want to lose the h pawn okay. no space for creativity g3 let's go for oh wait she just lost a pawn wait. that wasn't that great this I mean, is a pawn. Drawing, but you know, but yeah, a that pawn is a pawn. Hold on. Yeah, that wasn't that great by Humpy. Wow, G three. That's so beautiful. What did that happen? She just kind of stays here. Yeah, like white. It's very difficult for white to improve. Hmm. I like that. But I mean, we saw. Whenever, whenever there is an an opportunity to improve, in the mm. rook end game. There is always a chance to improve. Mm -hmm. Like there is always a space for improvements. I mean, now the king coming to f5 is kind of unpleasant. Yeah, I think that's kind of it. I think that's kind of it for improvement. Yeah. I mean, on king g3, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I guess we could just 
grab that grab the other one yeah there you go draw Ooh, okay we well, never say draw until it's draw because we know there's a man no, then there is a, the result oh yeah, yeah yeah okay i gave it away duna i'm sorry <laughs> uh okay 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 we've got seven to six still what one I like about, lead. yeah what i like about this is katarina's camera has improved not just her openings we can actually see her a lot better because something has happened with her light um and probably the sun that just moved yeah maybe the sun well the sun though there probably is i mean what sun is there right now if we think about what time it is in moscow it's probably like uh it's probably like like close to 9 p.m no right? it's so, actually only one hour more than at my place so it's like eight Eight. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, probably... it's actually yeah there is no switch in russia for for two hours oh, for for winter summertime anymore so it's like in summer uh, there's less time difference got it got it yeah that's right i guess is that like her window there because i guess that might be just the light from the window but yeah we can see yeah. her a lot better than at the beginning of the match and humpy you know she is playing i guess in a windowless room or at least not where there is a window near her so there is no change to her she just you turns know, the light on yeah maybe mm, <laughs> but most importantly not only the light has improved but also the position on the board just as you said it's arena and so uh, we can praise we can think that or katarina can think that to the break i guess that's what made her stronger and what is this end game what is this same end game same end game i think katarina plays a little differently certainly this f5 move not something we've seen before she's maybe also has some f4 ideas um okay so what can humpy do here humpy can take yeah go bishop d3 on bishop takes f5 take on f5 say that this pawn on e7 is a long-term weakness Oh yeah, it's a very long term. It's a okay. Now we got this uh, bishop to uh, bishop to where? Bishop to d three. That's it. Bishop to d three. Mm -hmm. You have to be a little careful about castling long because there's actually that pawn surprisingly hanging. Oh wow! Would you would you ever take that pawn? I guess yes, because the I bishop is not is I'll not take, gonna get trapped. Yeah, I'll take your bishop and then I'll take the pawn. Um. <laughs> Uh -huh. So she castled. Okay, interesting. So on yeah. this takes, I'm sure she wants to take with a G pawn and straighten out her pawns. So I think white should go maybe just like rook D1. Rook D1 seems like a very wise decision. You kind of, oh, just played. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, maybe it's you not should... the best move because there's bishop D3, king D3, knight F4. And then she kind of makes me give up my bishop for the, for the knight. Yeah, and I'm wondering whose piece is going to be stronger because if I play f3 and knight e4, I would kind of enjoy my life with that knight, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's true, like, that this pawn is a, a residual problem for black, but the thing is that there could be, you know, just maybe some kind of count to play with bishop f6, although I have h5, right? So yeah, I would say that I still like white. Um, I wonder what she's thinking about. To me, this move is like, is like very obvious like it just needs to be played yeah but for me you know it's not just a matter of the pawn on the seven if it's strong or, or weak if it's weak or weak i mean <laughs> but for me it's also it's in fact the outpost on e4 for the night that makes the whole difference yeah i mean the structure is better. There's potential defile play. I guess Katarina is trying to go for some b4 somewhere, yeah? But uh, yeah, I like Humpy's position here. She also, I mean, she's got that king in her sights, right? Like, even though it's the end game, you can still generate some play against the opponent's king. Yeah, for sure. Okay, h5, you called for it. She takes h5. Now, come on. I want to see my knight on e4. I mean, if you want to take some time, you can also put the rook, I guess. I mean, on h5, yes, for sure. But, but, Bring me that knight on e4. Also, one more thing that I really enjoy about this position is that now we got the c4 square, and that is the square for my mm. king. Wait, I said my king, and the king went to e3. I didn't get that. Okay, it's a nice move, like uh, attacking that rook and trying to open up the d file. 
94. Yeah. So once the rook moves, I assume she's probably planning 94 or possibly pawn takes b4. I mean, it depends where where the rook goes. Actually, I think you can take on b4, let them take on b2. And um, okay, so now we need to think 94 or something else. Yes, finally. Thank you. 94. I wanted it so much. I wanted so it so, really so much. We don't really want to trade the rooks, do we? Or maybe we do. I mean, we kind of come in first, but they get rook a5. So that's a little bit of a problem. Hmm. Well, understandable, you know, very understandable. Um, what is like the main issue here? Rook coming to d7, I say. Yeah, the question is how white deals with this move. That's the question, right? Rook a5. Rook a7. Yeah, and then f4. I think this is it. F4, F5, okay. Yeah, okay. First she saves the pawn, but like <laughs> that is White's ultimate plan. And, you know, Katarina again gets this kind of outside pass pawn supported by the Fianchetto Bishop. And it's a strong pawn, so it's going to be a matter of tempo. F4, A4, F5, A3, F6. I think she's in time. I don't know. I would have probably gone for that, but she goes for the C pawn instead. Okay. Yeah, well, it seems like you have enough time, Rook A6. Now, like, Black needs to, uh, to to do something. It's super important not to move the C pawn, by the way, because this is the pawn that stops the whole thing of, of here, of, of Black. Okay, checking yeah, it's F7. Very tricky. It's very tricky. I mean, like, she needs to... She's, well, Black is going to go A2 and then... Wow, is Humpy trying to make a draw? No, don't make a draw. Pull the I king. King f4. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. F4. That's Lots it. Of fighting spirit. Okay, so king f4. Yeah. That's what we a want two. to see. I mean, you can't really move your king, but maybe you can just like push up your c pawn. Hmm. Maybe c4. Your king. Or g5 or something. There is rook f1. I didn't like she, that. She allowed that. She allowed that, huh? But maybe that's okay. <sighs> gonna get that checkmate threat yeah they gotta move their bishop there is bishop c3 there's yeah, bishop c3 there is no checkmate here ay 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 oh but there is a rook yeah yeah it's gonna ay, ay. fizzle out and a draw hmm yeah i mean a little bit misfortune for humpy but geez how how he Tense. How close is this matchup? Yeah, that's actually, you know, it's funny. Uh, wow. Yeah. No, I thought that this match would be very close, just given, um, you know, how close these players are to each other in classical ratings. And, um, you know, Katarina's it, uh, advantage in Blitz. But I mean, it's funny. Uh, that's why, you know, Humpy's not able to win by like a large amount, despite I think the fact that, you know, overall she's kind of playing better. It's because, you know, Katarina is a very good blitz player and she definitely is keeping her uh, under pressure on the clock. Mm, yeah, totally agree with you. And, um, you know, that's something that we can learn from Katarina. Being world world blitz champion, you kind of like ask, what's the secret and i guess the secret is about play fast and putting like the pressure on your opponent clockwise do not you know go search for those like super concrete super precise moves no you don't need that you just need good moves a lot of good fast moves always better than like the fast moves but taking too much time on it to make them yeah so she went for the scotch four nights by the way right so she did make a change My favorites yeah, and we saw Polina Shuvalova do this a lot against Tan. So, you know, I've had my fill of these positions. Um, mm. You know, this is what we you, saw the whole match. You will never imagine in your life how many games in database I have, classical games in this position. I'd say at least 30 or even more. And luckily, I mean, not luckily, surprisingly, I kind of have a good statistic. And my favorite would be, you know, just to go to um, when it happens when Black plays Bishop on d6, not on e7. You just have your Bishop on g5. When they play h6, you trade everything. You go to the end game. You know that 
the same end game that Ding Loren versus Firuja had once at the candidates. But and then you just outplay your opponent better. There are some nice plans here and there. Everybody says, like, why does white go to this position in such a dreadful drop? You know, when you're a little bit lower rated than those, like, you know, pros, you kind of can enjoy your moments here and there. Yeah, so bishop d6, and now I guess rook e one is the logical move from Katarina. So, you know, she, like, maybe queen c7, interesting move by Humphy, make the trade happen um, on her terms to get the queen to d6, because I don't really, I mean, I guess you could trade and put the queen on f4, but I think generally white's queen is kind of happy to go there. Yeah, um, okay. we just in the trades on f4. Queen uh, d8. Okay. Nice, Ooh. nice move by Humphy, finding that way to get a queen trade. Find wait, 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 hold on a second. Here there is my idea. You take the queen and you go knight a4 and you use this dark squares. You use this dark squares. This is the main plan here. If you now manage to play c3 and b4, mm -hmm. boom, you're going to yeah. have your moments. Well, that's why, you know, this is actually a good point. Do you know, yeah, that's why I was not so in love with the idea of letting white get this uh, file because I was kind of thinking what C5? You know, we might want to have like a queen um, on d6 and try to play for c5 but okay exactly that that's the best way for for black to play exactly the best but look at what's happening now c5 mm. knight takes c5 rook b2 whose favor is this trade in yeah black probably wants to go like rook a2 Hmm. The evil bar now gives advantage to Y, but my question is like, what is so particular about this trade? I do think I have an answer. I would say it's that now D5 is actually way too, like, let's say, restricting the bishop on E6. But there is also an idea of taking that bishop sooner or later. But I mean, your rook is super active. Maybe rook B1, making the use of the of the open file. How about that? Yeah, I mean, so after rook a2, which move did you want to play for white, Dina, f4? Rook, rook, rook b1, yeah. Uh, rook, rook b1, b1 in the open file. Yeah, so she wants to use the pin. Yeah, she wants to win a piece. Um, Out of black it response. does make sense. Also, it, once again, it's that kind of a move, which you make fast and you let your opponent think. Yep, so she goes for that bishop and pawn, and now black is going to get this one, I think. And it seems like black is okay. I mean, how, I mean, white can obviously make like some trouble to the black king. Correct. Huh. She wants to go like, she just wants to double up on the seven. Ooh. Um, this trade is definitely in white's favor because the bishop on d3 is super strong. Also the rook on, on, on the seventh rank. And as you said, Doubling up on the seventh rank would be would be a killer blow. Maybe rook e8. Did we have a chance to do that? Rook e8. If I go rook b1, let's say. Yeah. I won't let you. You know, I just won't. I won't let you have your party. Well, it yeah, it's it's tricky. It is tricky. Okay, knight e4. I like. Rook d7. Okay, cool. by Katarina. Attacking d5. Maybe go back. You can go back. Yeah, just go back. I mean, what is she thinking about? She's taking way too long. Okay. Oh, she sees some danger. She wants to go down Ooh. into this rook end game. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, by Humpy. Very high level idea. Giving up material to go for counterplay. I think that was actually quite wise of Humpy. Yeah. I kind of like rook e3 with idea rook g3 exactly. Yeah, the computer is not happy about this. Oh, he's gonna have to try to keep this smart. here. I mean, the oh. you know, the rook on d2 is gonna be really good. It probably should be enough to hold the game for black. It's just an excellent rook. Yeah, how about this? Okay, too late. I mean, hold on a second, it's again extra pawn, and there is something in it. There, if we bring the king, if if we kind of like bring the king, we push the pawn, we get the the pass pawn. You know, it, it can be it can be our way. 
Yeah, the problem for Humpy, six seconds left. This is a really tough situation to be in. <laughs> it's so common. I mean, I can already recognize the patterns. This is very inspiring. Rook d6 and rook d4. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. And king e3, bring that king. Yes. Hmm. Bring that king. I love that. I love how Catherine is improving here. Yes. Oh, h4. <gasps> but now it's just a masterpiece. Oh my gosh. I mean, computer says it's still equal. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. I mean, computer says it, it's, it's, it's why it's better, but with all three lines having the same approach, you know, same yeah. evil bar. Wow. It I makes you she's, understand. Yeah, she's losing here. She tried the frontal defense, but it doesn't work. This rook is perfect and the pawn just goes, I think. Um, yeah, no, Katarina's going to take this game. <gasps> Whoa! So easy. Oh my lands. Well, this is not that exciting to say. Oh my lands. I, I better keep it for for another day. Now just rook c5 and king c7 and and promoting king c8. Oh uh, wow wow wow! And look at that. For a first time since the very beginning of the match, when the score was zero zero. Now Katarina has managed to equal this score. It's seven and a half to seven and a half. And we could see, we could see in Katarina's face reaction that she was feeling a lot of relief. Could we see yep. that? And Humpy not happy with that result, but okay. It's a close match. And Katarina is, um, is showing her skills in this faster portion they've got actually you know probably time for just one last game for the three minutes so finally at the end of the three minutes she has equalized the score in the match and she has a chance to come out ahead um and humpy like again let's see she is kind of uh well i don't know who who is changing what here but they're in a new position for the match main move here is queen uh c takes d5 and queen b3 Humpy yeah, it's is kind of taking her time to remember it. It's a kind of completely new. Also, like I'm curious, what is gonna let's say what are gonna life odds say right now? Because you know, it's like for the first time the score is even. Yeah, actually, for the first you know, time the score is even. About, yeah, maybe it's not a, actually that line because maybe black is up a tempo compared to what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Speaking of live odds, we have them on the screens. We see that. I guess Katerina, wow, it actually changed a lot. The live odds are back for Katerina's favor with 53 to 47. It's a little, a very small difference, but it's still the, the ball is now on Katerina's side. Well, this is, this is wow. Well, let, let's get back to the game. It's, it's an interesting stats so after all. Yeah, right now, yeah, Black has to play E6 to protect the F7 pawn. <laughs> And yeah. we've got an isolated pawn structure with black already fianchettoed, which in general is not bad for black. Um, oh, is there going to be some sort of sacrifice? Because she's kind of inviting something like that to happen. But maybe it's not really. Maybe it's not Very really typical night of seven, right? Oh, yeah. it happened. <gasps> it wow. actually happened. Go wow. Free. I mean, we haven't seen that many sacrifices in this match, so it's actually pretty cool that we're getting one to uh, close out the three minute. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's the first sacrifice, right? It really is. And I mean, it's, the, the thing, though, is like it's still tricky to, you know, follow up. Like, yes, this is actually logical move that Knight is threatening to go to D6. How does how does uh, Katarina? Well, maybe D six is not such a big threat because it can get captured. You take it's just a trade. How does Katarina deal with this? I mean, maybe just Knight C six. Knight C six. Maybe there is also Knight A six as an option. Knight A six to stop. I mean, it's more passive, but in a way, it stops some some jumps. Although I'm not sure what the jumps are for. Um, I like both, definitely. And uh, I guess the question we should ask in this position is what is White's threat? The threat is this, yeah. So she went for this move, even though I see the engine bar doesn't like it. But, um, but yeah, it's just a very natural move. And how does White 
really punish this. I mean, maybe white just needs to castle, you know? Do you know, maybe there's nothing really concrete. You just need to get your development in. I like the castle. I actually, even both castles here could be considered, even though like Lone Castle seems pretty wild, but maybe if it's just one more temple and then the king goes to B1, it should be all right as well. Ooh, Rook C1. Ooh, what is this move? Interesting. Rook C1. So the threat is, let's say. Yeah, what is the threat? Yeah. <laughs> I don't okay, know. let's say it's just improving, improving the rook, improving the position. A, what about the queen trade? Is there some kind of idea? Okay. Uh, Knight of six. Why no, why it has like to take one of seven? I think, oh, I think, wait, takes, it takes knight well takes takes knight d6 or knight d6 <laughs> okay but then what knight c7 rook b8 is it d5 oh wow it's d5, d5 and bishop a7 dina <gasps> oh wow i love that d5 and bishop a7 she's trapping the rook in the corner that's beautiful that's fascinating. Yeah, she found I love it. that. She found a nice, very specific idea here. Well, you know that sacrifice, if you think about it, even if it, let's say, equal, it doesn't give that much of advantage. You put your opponent into enormous pressure. And on practical level, it's once again, I keep, I always keep repeating the same thing when I do commentary on Blitz events, is that in Blitz, it's way harder to defend than to attack, even if, let's say, both sides are objectively even equal. That's what yeah, I think she can, go, she can just go King E2, actually. King E2. Because you don't like... Yeah, because yeah, Knight well, C1. Well, she needs to not blunder this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Right. Wait, wait. Black is winning here. Dina, hold on. Why is black winning? <gasps> it happens. Check? Has she just walked into some sort of check and then the rook moves out or what? Oh, yes. Bishop f5 or bishop g4 and rooks, a rook moves out to c1. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh my land. No, it's not this, this reduction. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's f3 and it's rook c8, isn't it? I mean, she's just going to be. Oh, able yes. To... Oh, wow. She. That's why I was saying king e2, not king d2. Yes. Was king was that was way more practical. That was wow, wait. Humpy has just is... lost the piece. Oh yeah. Rook c7. Oh. Rook c7. I mean, you didn't have to, but that was beautiful. That is okay. quite the turnaround. <gasps> quite the turnaround for Katarina. Oh my land. He's totally winning now, and Humpy is going down by a point. Wow! 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 I mean, let's just show this key moment, guys. I mean, it looked like Humpy had everything under control and this check happened, right? And so right here, looks like this was a bad idea to walk into these checks. Could have gone King E2. And King E2, after... my question was after Bishop G oh, Knight C1, Rook C1 and Bishop G4, F3, Rook C8. The difference right now here is that the Knight on C7 is already protected. Yep, that's it. Wow. Check from E8. So. Basically, white would wind up winning uh, at least a piece, and they would have a lot of extra pawns. Um, so yeah, Katarina takes this game. It's kind of symbolic, you know, like to end the three-minute portion by, you know, kind of completing your comeback, going up a point. Um, well, she had the initiative in this portion. It didn't have to go her way. Like, it obviously could have been Humpy's game. Humpy played a really nice uh, bishop, uh, knight takes F7 move straight out of the opening, kind of taking up the challenge that Katarina put in front of her. And honestly, it is disappointing for Humpy to play that kind of aggressive move. And then then even besides that, she spotted this nice continuation with, uh, with the move D5, right, right over here, D5, right, Knight C7, followed by D5. She had, uh, you know, basically all the nice tactics in this game, but the final... Final mistake was by her, and um, oh, yeah. yeah, quite sad. I mean, I'm not sure what she could have done to draw this. Actually, maybe she should have taken the rook. 
Uh, taking the rook here yeah perhaps but didn't have that much time to understand i think it was just a blunder the blunder of the idea that the bishop light square bishop from c8 can actually go out with a check and free the rook and that being said it makes now uh katarina leading the whole thing with eight and a half to seven and a half we have just seen katarina winning two games in a row we have already seen that the, even the live odds are now showing the bigger and bigger percentage of win for katarina but yeah, it's such a tense, such a, a, a tough match, a very close. And we're entering the third portion. Three plus one has just finished. We're entering one plus one in just a couple of minutes. So everybody, do not move, freeze. We'll be right back.
Hey guys, we're back with the bullet portion of the match between Humphy and Katarina. And Katarina has just overtaken the lead for the first time in this match. She's ahead by one point, and she has shown herself to be really good in the faster time control. Um, however, Dina, we do remember that Humpy actually came from behind against Nana Zagnidze and surprisingly won the bullet section pretty convincingly. So I think we can't count her out. Absolutely not. No way. And uh, we're about to start the bullet portion, as you said, one plus one. Well, 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 I kind of say it's completely unpredictable. That's what I would say. What do you think, Irina? Yeah, I think based on what I saw from Humpy's bullet play, I mean, she can play uh, very well just uh, based on instinct and experience, right? So five minute, I think, is her best portion. It's like that allows her to play like her level of chess. Three minutes, she's kind of shaky in because it's like neither here nor there, right? It's like it's not as fast as bullet. Uh, you still have to think. And then, then she kind of gets bogged down by thinking and she gets low on time. I think that's her... Um, that's the weakness in her, uh, you know, um, out of those three time controls. But I think actually we should see some good stuff from Humpy in the bullet. Yeah, and you know, now that having actually uh, spoken it through with you, I kind of start realizing that I would be putting my favorite odds on, on Katarina. In fact, like, it is true, the whole match, she has been the one knowing how to deal with time better. And Bullet is about dealing with time. Bullet is yeah. about playing fast. And Katarina has been simply... The fast she has one. been, but you should. You, but you should. Yeah. The, the, the reason you're thinking so is you haven't seen the match. Uh, Humpy Zagnidze. <laughs> when you say when you saw that bullet portion, you would understand what I mean. That Humpy is capable of playing. Uh, she's capable of playing very well and quickly, despite the fact that you would think that yes, of course, Katarina is the faster player. She's more of the blitz specialist. But Humpy is not going to be like slow in this. She's just going to play fast moves. She's perfectly capable of that. So that's my. My prediction is that this portion will be close. I don't really know. Um, I don't know that anyone has the edge here, um, which I guess would suit Katarina because right now she's up by one. But oh, yeah, yeah I think, absolutely. I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised by Humpy here. Hmm, all right, right. Let's see. By the way, we already see the change. I have not seen that pawn on C4 in patch of before. Have you? I mean, in this match. Yeah, she's playing. Uh, actually, I think it was Humpy who, instead of going for knight c6, she went for bishop b4, which is just a different line entirely. And so she gave up the bishop pair to white, um, gave up the bishop pair to white, but her position is solid. All right, so they have the same amount of time, both playing at good speed. Um, Bullet is about yeah. playing till 5 a.m. in the morning while playing Tournament of One's Life. Is that what Bullet is about? Yeah, I guess so. Yes, yes, it is absolutely what it is about. We see the reference. We do not comment, no comments. We concentrate on the match. Katerina versus Humpy. No distraction, no candidates, no Miss Amigos. So we're, you know, we're over. We have passed it. Miss Amigos over, has been. Uh, I like the trades on G5 and G4. Yep, I was just going to say f6, king of seven. So Humpy, I mean, okay, first of all, the position is really quite equal. She could go knight e5, sure, good move. Take with an f pawn, of course. Oh, wow, d pawn. She's got to take with the f pawn. All right, but this is fine. Black is certainly comfortable. Yeah. You know what? I feel like the first game of bullets, no one really wants to show their their cards. Yeah, everyone wants like to kind of to test the time control, to test each other. Everybody is comfortable with the draw in the first bullet game. This is would be my prediction. Yeah, they're well, they seem comfortable because it ended in a draw. So no one's really making any headway. All right, Humpy with the white pieces now. Let's see her. I guess Katarina going for some kind of King's Indian stuff. Nope, she's still yeah. back. And this one we saw already. This is that kind of a ratty slash uh, mm -hmm. ratty. That's what I would call it. Uh, D5, queen B3. Okay, take and take it. Oh, will we see again the sacrifice on F7? Yeah, I doubt it. I don't think so. Knight, knight to six. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Also, a draw is a good result after a loss. Two losses in a row for Humpy. There has been the last two games. And... Uh, yeah, Nate G4, I like that. Going after the bishop it's an on the annoying move. It's an annoying move for sure, plus lots of like lots of ideas. Queen D6, I would say, is also quite annoying. Uh, Absolutely. Forcing white to go G3, then taking 
I mean, yeah, I'm a little worried for White's King here. I don't feel like this is going that great for Humpy so far. It's a game it is not easily lose. C5. Ooh, I like the, the energy. Opening the bishop, putting the bishop on B7, opening the G7 bishop. I, I really enjoy it. Is D5 an option? D5, yes. Yeah, I think she's got to try to at least give this bishop some scope, right? But there's this yeah. D5 move, and it's, I don't know, it's, it's unpleasant. I don't know, like E4, okay. It is a pleasant. You're right. It isn't pleasant. Mm -hmm. King is a bit weak. Yeah, Katarina has a nice time advantage and positional advantage as well. So we might just be seeing her. It looks like, it, yeah, this game is definitely going in her hands. I mean, I, I do like the bishop on d5 now. I definitely enjoy it. Um, there is this perhaps uh, weak king, but it's not so easy to find a way how to get to it. Yeah. Um, all right. So Katarina playing very safe, right? Yes trading off those bishops and she's still better. I mean, her bishop is obviously superior to the knight. She won a pawn. Oh, pawns being traded. That doesn't mean, yeah, that's not the worst outcome for white. That's the thing, Dina, you know, because yeah. uh, now, okay, she basically got rid of all the defects of her position and in the rook end game, she can definitely hold on. So oh, yeah, not so bad for, um, not so bad for Humpy, but still, I don't, I don't know about that Rooksy one move. I, I don't know. Yeah, interesting how Katarina refused to trade the queens. Yeah, I think that was a good call for sure because this king is weaker than Black's king. Yeah, makes sense. Makes total sense. Rooksy six, I like that. How about somewhere we push h5, h4, opening even more the king? Ooh, c4 getting rid of the weakness. Love that. Hmm. There was this, you know, queen. No, queen d5 wasn't possible. And are now we are in a rook right. end game. Yeah, she's, I mean, she kind of reached that rook end game where she's got those drawing chances. Wait, pawn up for Katarina. Who's oh, yeah. got the well, drawing she's... chances for who? Yeah, for well, for Humpy. <laughs> Humpy's been down yeah. for a long no, time. No, Humpy is the one. I mean, how how big her chances are here? It looks like. Yeah, it looks maybe like not. Up. She's yeah. Her pawns, but, well, we'll see. King h4, let's just do it. And see what happens. Maybe Ooh. take take again. Maybe yeah, take king g five was also possible. All right, she's still only down a pawn. This is all right. She's giving a lot of checks now. Yeah. Oh yeah. She, okay. Doesn't this look like a draw? Oh no, this like is a draw. draw. The white black loses his rook. Yeah, that's a draw. All right, big big save by Humpy. This was a really unpleasant position for her, and to get a save there is is good stuff. Yeah, and even the car outside in New York uh, praised the draw of uh, Humpy saving that game. All right, back to this line. Uh, you didn't hear that? I'm sorry, what did you say that? that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just focus on the position. What did you say? I said even the car on the streets outside of New York uh, made I'm that sign excited. of praising for Humpy's saver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just... You know, that's one of the benefits of sitting by the window is that I get all that city noise coming in through the window. <laughs> Amazing benefit. That was, that was a perfect moment just when the draw was signed, you know. All right. So what do yeah. we have here? Another patch? I also, I also have loud motorcycles, Dina, if you like that sound. I enjoy the crazy it. people speeding by on the street. I absolutely enjoy it. I mean, coming to, to U.S. is my dream. So whatever you give me, I'm happy <laughs> with anything. Have you been to New York before, Dina? No, I've never been to U.S. So as I said, coming right. to U.S. is my biggest dream. So any sign, sound you give to me, I'm happy with it. But especially when it's a praising in Humpy's draw. Right. So what do we have here? I see the knight on D5. I, I see another patch of so many different patch drops, uh, by the way. Yeah. So they're repeating the line they had a few games ago. White's got the bishop hair. Black's got, I don't know, solid enough position. C6. Must yeah, c6, attacking the queen. Oh, nice. Ooh. Tactics, tactics. Oh, oh, right. oh, oh. careful. Not, not, a, not, not that awesome of a tactic, though. Unfortunately, yeah, there was, was no peace on c3. Unfortunately, yeah. there was no peace on c3. I think, I think it would have been better for her not to have seen it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, attacking the bishop, bishop c6. Ooh. So nice. white, is, white is not up a pawn. But it certainly feels like they're up something because they've got two bishops against two knights. 
And we know that two nights, or she just played the move I was yeah, advocating, um, two knights can only compete against two bishops if they have outposts. Correct. Uh, two knights can only compete with two bishops if they have outposts. This is so wise. Oh, Bishop but F4. she survived. You know, she survived, Dina. Like, how many yes. got out of this? Because one of those bishops is gone. Correct, correct. Oh, there is the pawn. Knight C4. Ooh, queen. That was queen C5 move. That was queen C5 um, saving. But it's still an advantage for, for, for why. I mean, it's an extra pawn. It's an extra. And the most beautiful part of this thing is that the pawn is in front of the rook. Which makes the rook be Ooh, behind of the pawn. pawn. Maybe pawn, take it. I don't know. You could try. Uh uh. A6. A6. So it's super sharp, right? It's between white's A pawn and the play on the king. Oh, strong move by Catalina. Ooh. I don't know what she needed to do, but Ooh. somehow. Oh, yo, yo. Katerina wins. And there we go. Katerina is two points ahead. Ten and a half Went to eight ahead. and a half. Ooh, that seems like the match is slightly moving into Katerina's direction. Yeah, I don't know what she needed to do. I honestly don't know what Humpy needed to do in that moment to get counterplay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was not so easy. Well, that being said, yet another Grunfeld. How surprising. Yeah, we haven't seen this That's... one before. So I'm refraining from going back to the opening, guys, as I know you find yes, that's we don't annoying have time. when I do that. <laughs> so I'm just letting us kind of start talking about the game, uh, you know, 10 moves in. Um, well, what do we see here? Humpy, symmetric position. She's got that bishop. Knight uh, takes. Exerting a little bit of pressure on the diagonal. So white still is a little better, I would say. I mean, for a bullet game, but she's down 20 seconds on the clock, which is not that great. Yeah. Queen B3, I like that move. The position is symmetrical, but the bishop on G2 is just a monster. Also, not letting the opponent to develop. So life is life is beautiful here at, at White's cost. C mm. cost. That's what yeah, I Yeah, it's tricky. It. It's tricky to find a move here for white to really put pressure on black. I agree. It's a little annoying. <gasps> Look at the pawns. A, uh, a takes B6. Now we got a doubled one on B7 and B6. Kind of makes it the second weakness. There is B7, but there is also double pawns. The question is, is that enough to win? So she's moving up those pawns, inching them up the board. But B5 is coming. Watch out for B5. Good move. Good move by Katarina. Also, so that you guys know when I say, like, is this or that positional advantage enough to win? Obviously, it's a very small detail on the scale of a bullet game and how fast things are changing here and there. Wow. 92? Pawn? Yeah, 92. Okay. Is C4, we got this rook. Oh, A5, fast pawn. Let's go. Yeah, See both who's going is faster. Ones. It's very See? tricky. A <gasps> maybe A7. A7. Oh, my. The board, pushing that pawn. It's funny because, you know, Lagna was doing the same thing against her in the previous game, right? Wait. Knight C4 and Knight B6. Knight C4 and Knight B6. Wow. Wait, that's, what? Annoying. that's annoying. Oh my God, what a crazy tactics. You shouldn't have taken that pawn. You should have promoted A8 immediately. But the problem is, yeah, you can you can go for a draw. Yeah, you can take and play A8. Okay, rugby, rugby two is good. Oh, B6, Katarina. watch out time, Humpy, watch out time. Yeah, she was up to the challenge. Katarina. Careful, one second on the oh. clock, careful. Yeah. Yes, we gotta okay. make a draw. Draw is fine. Draw. Just don't get flagged. Do not get flagged. Yeah, okay. She's not going to get flagged now. It's all good. But she's got, you know, she's got 17 minutes to make up those two points. I mean, it's it's doable. It is doable. But right now, I think Katarina is looking more comfortable in the in the bullet, right? So Yeah, and in every draw, as you say, Katarina looks more comfortable in every draw. Yep. Yeah, she's okay. definitely playing faster. She's kind of... A building up a time lead sort of imperceptibly 
somehow Humpy's like down 20 seconds on the clock and that's a lot for for Bullet. Oh yeah, yeah, totally agree with you there. So Humpy so we got to kind of try to keep up with her on the clock. Yes, correct. 93. D5, I don't know, D5, C4. Most logical, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. Maybe Bishop A6 and F3. Ooh, that's annoying. Like F3 somewhere here. You try to take that pawn. Ooh. Oh. Oh, wait. That's a bone. Where did it come from? Ooh. Yeah. Um, Make it for the but, bone. Yeah, white is up a pawn. That's it. That's not... Um... C5, Queen F4. Also, that Knight on A6 is terrible. And this Bishop is yes. C4. Ooh. Not How about... It's hard in these in these in this one in this bullet for Humpy to really like show her positional skills, right? Mm. So we can see that. Mm. Yeah. Do you I kind something? of do you see something yeah. delicious, you know? Because that's what I think of when I <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about night. No, okay, uh, forget about it. Thank God. <gasps> oh my gosh. I thought that the bishop on C1 was on D3. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> it's been second match. It's all fine. Bishop G5. I want to see Bishop G5. Show me my Bishop G5. What, 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 what's happening up there? You said you like knights and F5. So I think that's what Katarina is doing. She's trying to Ooh, put the knight in F5. Nice. That's Look my that. main over here. 38 seconds against 17 and a half. This is, this is tough. Katarina is so insanely fast. And queen H4, I guess. Just queen H4. A G4 queen is also fine. She's doing well, okay. though. I kind of like this. She's she's holding she's holding up here. You mean Humpy? Yep. Okay, knight h6. And I then mean, queen I get it. The computer likes white, but I don't really see why it's that devastating. So I feel like okay, this is not so bad yet for black. Yeah, yeah. We got 15 more minutes remaining, and there is two points lead for Katerina. Ooh, that's oh. like a mouse slip or something. F6. It's like a mouse slip. And maybe this knight is King G7, out. you think so? Yeah, wait. Oh yeah. Rook C1 oh, is 100. I mean, I don't know. Well, maybe Oh, not. no, no, no. Rook C1. Oh, wait. Rook C1. It's just like, isn't this bishop? Oh, time, 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 time. Sorry. Sorry. One, one minute for Katarina. Oh, my God. You can take, I, I, take I got... an F4. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's lost. I mean, it doesn't matter for time. Oh, it's a piece. All I mean, right. Katarina has to fight. Piece. You've got more time. You can do it. Let's go. Katarina has to fight here. Do not resign. We do not care about peace up, peace down. We do not resign. We fight. At this point, every second matters. Every single second. Oh, Ooh, nice fork by Humpy. Expected it. All right. I, I, I want this I, match I, to be I, close. I, yeah, I, so I, I got to, you know, we got to be happy for those forks. It's taking it to within one. One point. Okay. Guys, that is super exciting. You know, Suspenseful. Wow. I don't think we've had that many close matches at this late stage. I mean, Conero was, was was fairly close, but like this is just one point. This is a really good tense match. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly the damn girl moment. I mean, it's not a damn girl moment because I mean Black still was extra piece. So it's not that shocking. So let's let's calm down. Let's see what happening. What is happening in this game? We get 13 more minutes makes it at least six more games that's how i would call it yeah maybe more uh 13 minutes no it's not it's less than six games but um but let's see like is it getting that one second increment it kind of adds up what do we see here i mean humpy doesn't really have anything she's down like a little on the clock well um queen d1 Bishop a6 queen d1 queen, queen d4 queen a3 whatever Maybe queen a3, queen a3. yeah nice on. it's always good to make some threats okay i like the queen here actually mm. make, yeah make, because make it your opponent think a little bit yeah <laughs> this is exactly what we want to make katarina think knight c8 Ooh, that's okay. an ugly uh, d5 move. somewhere i mean it's sort of it's calling for d5 i agree bishop g4 okay Nice move. Nice move. Yes. Do? I don't know what to do. Dina, if I was white, I would be like Bishop E2. Just just 
<laughs> just let's go for all the passive backwards moves because you know chess is not checkers pieces can move backwards Yo. h3 next move okay bishop h4 and h3 okay. no h3 just do it yeah you see how uh, it's like yeah good. i mean my moves are not even that good but it's just like it's still possible to be natural <laughs> it's natural here i really enjoy white's yeah. position but the computer says black is so much better this is funny i mean it's because of the space you get this illusion of an advantage because of the extra space but in fact your pieces are bad i mean your bishop is bad yeah the black's bishop is better than white's and uh yeah this is annoying queen e7 yeah two. i mean she's picking up a pawn here Ooh, queen oh, takes I'm queen to stay alive in this game she really needs to like not lose yeah i agree i agree who's gonna take whose queen first that's the question let's make the predictions still got let's make the answers. predictions i mean it's bad too late it's not, black took white it's <laughs> too not late. over this night is look a at the crap. night how the night is doing is the night feeling comfortable on b2 i mean yeah, after a4 really definitely interesting yeah no now it's okay Whoa, rook c6 okay, okay is that pawn? I've got my oh okay. rook a8 she's playing so fast good for her i mean mm. i don't know if that's gonna be enough but at least like she's doing something here rook e7 oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh whoa. G6. whoa she just got herself a draw whoa amazing, my homie. amazing. A very me. important draw. You know, a very that important like, draw. That was like literally such a narrow path, you know, from that bad, bad position to that draw. Yeah. It was like, and she had so little time. You know, that's what I mean. Like, Humpy, Humpy can surprise us. Like, I, I don't think a lot of people would have saved that game against Logno. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely not. And we've got yet another draw. So it's 11 and a half to 10 and a half. Super tense, super tough, super not raking match. Yeah, it's really leading, but these players just cannot really separate from each other, right? They're just very close um, in ability. Yeah. So, yeah, nine more minutes, a little bit more than nine more minutes for the for the time remaining in this matchup. We're gonna see a lot of action. I mean, that was some good stuff from Humpy. I mean, like the rooks coming in, the night sack. I mean, she saw that instantly. You know, that was really nice. Oh yeah, absolutely. The night G six just nailed it yeah all right so again she's given up the bishop pair to white but you know in exchange for at least a fairly solid position yeah um you know her her black opening is um her blacks openings are not going as well as they were obviously in the five minute but she's just trying to you know find a fix for it right like she this is probably not the best stuff that she can put out but like you know it's probably what what she's uh come up with for this moment and uh you know working more or less okay for her oh yeah oh yeah absolutely and uh you know i like this uh, how how the game is right now here with this c4 pawn you know pushing it to c5 would be nice actually will will, will he push trading that pawn to c5 rooks. yeah trading the rooks is kind of a logical instinct for black yeah trade play like 95 Ooh, i would totally oh. trade the rooks i don't know like really oh. keeping, keeping yourself in that relationship seems a little a little scary okay and then there's going to be like some trade and they go back and like win your night so okay don't yeah 95 played okay fine knight to d5 Ooh, trading oh but maybe she doesn't see that idea what did you say what did you say? Like two? Oh, Humpy finds find something. Oh, that's a damn girl discovery. Moment. Oh my lands! Yeah, oh, no. she is. Oh my lands! Just yeah, the queen. Okay, okay. Uh, king h seven. Oh gosh! Uh, what happens if they take the pawn? I don't know. Queen, queen somewhere. Okay. It's know, exchanged down. Queen G7. Exchange. Yeah, Queen, yeah, Queen G7 was um, kind of a mouse play. I mean, well, yeah, Queen was definitely a mouse. Queen of, I mean, oh, perpetual. Is there perpetual. a perpetual? Oh, perpetual. no. Rookie no way. Eight. She's got to go rookie eight to keep it alive. She's got to <gasps> go rookie eight. She will go rookie eight. No. What's happening after rookie eight? Wait, wow. rookie eight? I don't know. Oh, rookie that's eight? sad for Humpy. 
That is so That's sad. How, why did she go? Why not Queen F4? She just like no. gave up the G4. Well, why not Corky 8? Maybe she for, oh. maybe she didn't even remember that she had it. I mean, it's not even that clear anymore, but. No, 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 it's definitely not clear anymore, but that was a logical move indeed. All right, yet another ready, yet another Grunfeld. All right, so she's still got chances. Still seven minutes left. So all the suspense is in the match. Yeah. Okay, seven more minutes, a little bit less. We've got only one point difference. Gosh, this is so tense and so close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good stuff they're giving us. All right. Yeah. We like those close matches. Uh, oh, yeah. Them? We love that energy. We love that fight. They already have this opening, right? And But this one seems like a better version for Humpy. Uh, whoa, is she just losing a pawn for nothing or is she just thinking she's going to get that pin yeah i think humpy's uh thank you for the bone losing the thread a little bit all uh, right take it i mean because that's a bishop bone right? is a bone rook d1 e6 yeah uh bishop is protected okay so she doesn't really have enough i gotta say that but yeah you could just go bishop takes a six pawn takes a six and something like knight to I don't know, to, yeah, to D4, or, yeah. 95, yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks natural. She's trying to keep the bishop on the board, which is interesting, but I'm really concerned about her clock. She just doesn't have... Pretty ambitious, time. yeah. I mean, you know, like, in a way, I kind of feel that bullets with one second increment is kind of like, it's it's not that... Um, it's not that harsh, yeah? It's kind of, you can even... Sometimes you can afford yourself thinking... For some time if you need it's not yeah. like yeah well we'll see because right now she has twice less time it's definitely a tough situation to be in but she's yeah. like she's somehow holding it together she knows how to do that queen g3 i like that move a lot queen g3 nice one yeah. somewhere there's gonna be rook joining the party like rook to e4 rook to e5 rook to e oh. no d4 oh c5 nice okay but that how about she wants to keep going you know Oh, hey, this is so active. No, oh my, this is actually a pain, this pawn now, a pain in the in, in the part that we're not allowed to say because that pawn actually now will, will become a strong pawn. It was a weakness, but now after C3, it's going to be yeah. traded. <gasps> but I mean, she's taking comes. the pawn. Now she's fine, right? Yeah. She got the pawn back. And by the way, she made a tricky threat of like rook G4, which... Katarina defended against. Okay. So tricky. Pawn is not there anymore. B3. Ooh. B3. Don't even think about it. Yeah. Well, I like the way how, how White managed to 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 kind of neutralize. I would like black totally activity. lose on time here. I'm telling you. Like, <laughs> letting, you know, my own personal mm. skills would, would make me lose on time. <gasps> this evil bard drives me completely like, crazy. Knight is me and Knight takes G4. And this is the pawn. Watch out for knight e4. No. Careful. Careful. No, oh, no. A piece. That's a piece. Oh, oh. A piece. take. Wait, no, you don't take. You don't no. take. Okay, calm down, Dina. Calm down. Calm down. Everything's fine. Everything is under control. Of control of who? Control of who? Wait. I mean, yeah, Humphrey really needs a miracle here. A miracle. He, he might still get it. It's not, well, the problem is she can't Time. push that pawn. Time. Yeah. Jack. That's the problem. That's tough. Yeah. Uh oh. Check. Night jumping somewhere. Yeah. Okay. I think it's time to resign and try to. No, get don't resign. To... Okay, resign. Why not? Why not? Okay, <laughs> okay, 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 resign. Okay, resign. Okay, resign. She got to start the next game, right? She's got to make up <sighs> two points now. Two points yeah, for that, three that minutes, less than three yeah, minutes two... left in the match. Yeah, I'm not okay. sure. I think she, I mean, they have time to start. Yeah, she needs to win two in a row now. There is a theoretical chance she can do it. Yeah, two in a row will only, is only thing that needed to, to Humpy. It's the only thing that she can do if she wants to save this match. She needs, she needs that times. win. And then to give us one game for all the marbles at the end. I really we hope that she wins just to make it like, uh, what, what is it? We need the marbles, you said, Dina? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I really hope that she can just do it so we can have that like super exciting game in, in, at the finish. 
But right. if Katarina wins this one, then that's it. Nine C five. What the hell? What the hell? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry for bad word. What, what was that? She, <gasps> she got three pieces for this. Not a great tactic by Humpy because White has three pieces for the queen. And but you know you never know, right? Like you hang yes. by accident, and actually Black has a pawn for it. I would say this is still totally unclear. Like you know, it's from the point of view of playing for a win, it's not bad to have the queen on the board. Of course, White I has agree. It's yeah. imbalanced. Imbalanced position for if when you need a score, you need to go for disbalanced like material, everything different, just as long as you can confuse your opponent. Oh whoa, is she just trapping that queen or is this oh uh, almost oh, rookie that's seven only attack. move defend rookie seven correct 94. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, who's attacking who? I mean, I okay, Humpy's bringing her pieces, she's doing her best. Yeah, careful. Ru Bishop on d5 is not is not threatened because rook takes d5. There's knight f6. Maybe h6. Yeah, there you go. She tries to get rid of that knight. I mean, the thing is, like, white's better, right? Like, probably some rooks yeah. to fun, but you know, it's uh, really a tricky position to play in a bullet game. Yes, and actually, look, Humpy's. I was surprised. Ahead I mean, of time. Humpy. Yeah, she's ahead on the clock by a lot. Oh, look, rook d5. Take now. the bishop. Take whoa, the bishop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're going to get that Yay! game. We're going to get let's it. Let's go. Let's go. No, wait. 30, 30 seconds only left. Katerina needs to make this game last for 30 more seconds, and she will win the match. Oh, wow. Well, they have 40. Yeah, there's 48. Oh, I mean, you're right. She yes, might not. 20 seconds. Able... 20 yeah. seconds to 18 seconds. 15 seconds. Okay, just don't, don't stop counting, Dina. <laughs> that makes it less exciting for me. <laughs> Uh, let's pretend this game is going to still matter. Is there a checkmate on the back rank? Not yet. Checkmate and rematch. Oh, oh why is checkmating black? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, you know, in a way, Dina, it's like if this game wouldn't have mattered anyway, right? Then I would say that, um, you know, it's fine for the game to end in that checkmate. Let's see that final moment. I want to see the expression. Wow. Expression yeah. on both sides uh, when that checkmate happens. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, Katarina leans back. Humpy shakes her head, unhappy. Uh, yeah, Humpy probably did see the match clock. I think there was some of that in her language that she uh, knew that even if she won, it wasn't going to help her. I mm. mean, well, what can I say? I mean, Katarina, she's a really good blitz player, right? She is three-time Women's World Blitz champion, and I think she had to bring all of those skills to the table today to defeat such a strong player as Humpy Kuneru. Absolutely. Well, it was it has been an amazing performance by Katarina so far, but, you know, right now we're going to have the most exciting part of this match, which is going to be the interview with the winner, who is Katarina herself. So do not move, do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. Host Zoom Cable A. Are we mute?
and welcome back to Women's Speed Chess Championship 2022. We are now joined by the winner of today's matchup. Grandmaster Katerina Lagno has just beat Grandmaster Humpy Connor. Katerina, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That must have been one of the most tense matches and close matchups that we have seen so far in Women's Speed Chess Championship. Uh, you were down for the very big part of this match to one point, two points. And then at some moment you made this amazing comeback. Was it in your opinion, thanks to the fact that you kind of had some time to improve your, your openings after the first break, or was there some other reason? Well, yes, it's a mix of the reasons. So I uh, really, I had some very big difficulties in the five uh, plus one segment. I couldn't get anything uh, with white and I was struggling with black and uh, well, and I was minus two and, uh, but then she somehow, she blundered the rook in the, this uh, rook ending when I was two points down. Yes, already it was, a, it was a draw in the end, but still I got very lucky somehow I could breathe a little bit. And, uh, but then uh, I, I was still minus two. So, and we had a break. So, and during this break, I, uh, yes, I checked some lines just to, to know a few moves, <laughs> not to lose immediately with black. That was uh, the, the main point. And I had the feeling that, that she mixed up the, the moves in, the, in Petrov. So, and I checked it and I won uh, my first game three plus one segment without, without any fight because uh, she just, she played queen d7 instead of uh, b6 and it's just, uh, well, uh, I checked it, it was already over. So, Katarina, uh, in, the, in the five minute, did you consider like making a change in the openings like before the three minute, like? You know, against, for example, against the Petrov, like just trying something else because it wasn't working out so well. Well, I, uh, I, I wanted, but somehow I kept. Uh, no, I had two lines, uh, which I tried, and uh, somehow I felt that I'm slightly better in one of them. But uh, and I tried, I tried, I tried. Uh, and yes, uh, when we had the break already uh, after five and plus one segment, I decided to change. But uh, during this time, plus five plus one, I had the feeling that I, I missed my chances. So I uh, probably I was wrong, probably it was nothing for me. And I and I could have uh, changed uh, earlier, but uh, well, I tried <laughs> till yeah. the end. But if you would have changed, you would have just changed like another E4 line, right? Not like something radical like D4 on the first move. No, no, I would, I would play four nights. Uh, this line that uh, I started to play in uh, in bullet uh, and mostly and in, uh, in last three plus one game, I, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the, we saw uh, that. Katarina, um, I wanted to like uh, ask you one more thing. Um, I noticed that you're in the Indian bracket in in the Women's Speed Chess Championship because like you played Agarwal in the first round, you're playing Harika, uh, you played uh, Humpy in the second round, and now you're gonna play the winner of Harika versus um, versus uh, Vaishali, Vaishali. Right? Vaishali. Vaishali. <laughs> and so that's quite interesting that you can have like start your Women's Speed Chess. Uh, championship with three uh, Indian players. <laughs> Did you realize that? Uh, right now, yes. I thought already two in a row. It's, uh, <laughs> well, it's uh, it's just funny, but three three in a row, it's, uh, but, well, of course, it's, uh, I know uh, you, when you play Indian players, it, it's going to be a tough match. So just, uh, <laughs> I, I'm ready for it. Do you yeah. have a preference on who you're going to face uh, next? Is it going to be Varshali or Harika? Well, I played uh, Harika last time, last year, and uh, she won. So I consider her to be a favorite. But, uh, well, really, uh, Varshali, I saw her, her play. She was also fighting very well. So... I would say that, uh, in my opinion, Harika is stronger, but anything can happen. 
Right. Katrina, that was amazing having you. Thank you so much. We got a, a very big show thanks to you and thanks to, to Humpy. Arena, unless you have some other questions, uh, we're happy to to wish our guests uh, lots of luck in the best match, in the, in the next match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good luck, Katarina. We look forward to seeing you in, in the next matches. Thank you. I will have a good rest right now. <laughs> That's the most important. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Right, and there we go. We see right now the brackets that we have, just as we discussed it. So Katarina Lagno is now going to face in the semifinals one of the winners between Harry Kadrunavali and uh, Vaishali. And so who that going to be, we're going to find out very soon. But now we also know already a second semifinalist, which is Valentina Gunina, and the fourth semifinal is going to be de depicted, defined, in the mm -hmm. match between Katerina, wait, wait, not Katerina, Alexandra, Alexandra Kostinuk and Ho Yifan. All right, Irina. That That's going to be a good a... one. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that is going to be a good one. So uh, what a show, what a show today. I'm sweating so much, you know, between Ho Yifan versus Carissa Yep and uh, Katerina Lagno and Humpy Koru. That has been a very long day at the office for me so far, but that has been an absolute pleasure being being there with you as, as, as well as with Alicia Santaramo. It has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, um, you know, I just think the players gave us a great show in this match. Really good to play by both of them, really high quality. They kept it so close for the whole match. And, you know, of course, it's sad there has to be a, a winner and a loser. But I think, um, you know, both players made a very good effort today. And there's so much more great chess to come as the as the, the matches get even more competitive as the tournament goes on. Absolutely. And the tournament is going to, to continue. The tournament goes on. We got so many more matches. So stay tuned for that one. I guess it's time for us to thank everybody once again for the show and, uh, you know, uh, be back uh, very soon to you with a more amazing and fighting chess from the strongest women chess players of, uh, of nowadays, of all, all over the globe. Yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this coverage and we will see you soon.